For pity's sake, man, that was Jonathan Richmond and the Modern Lovers. Roadrunner, that was. You're listening to Russell Brand's Six Music. I'm here with Matt Morgan. He ain't in charge of the button, so I'm beginning to wonder what the point of him is. You're right, Matt. Mm, yes. What are you doing with the. I see someone else is operating your buttons. Oh, it's all weird up here, isn't it? We're in Scotland. Trevor Cocky Docky's here. Hello. You're right, Trev. I'm all right, but it feels all different up here. It's very unusual, this country, isn't it? Trevor, I. I hope that you're going to wait for more than a couple of minutes before attacking our brothers across the border in Scotland, particularly as we're in Scotland, and I, I like it in Scotland. I like it. I'm not saying it's different in a you bad way. You are saying it's I'm different. I'm saying it's different. It's very different, but I like the difference. You I like hate it. England. <gasps> Trevor, I love England. England. I love England. We're from England. I like England. What's wrong with you today? No, this like, room's different, obviously. This room the is studio's very different. different. All rooms are different from one another. Have no, you ever, they're not. Like, well, yes, they are, because think about it, right? Say you go uh, like a journey you do every day, like your journey to work, it's always a bit different, isn't it? If it happened exactly the same way, yeah, that would be weird. That would be uncanny. Yeah. That would be unusual. Mm. That would be like if on the way to work you saw a person that looked exactly like you and then he gestured towards your office building and went, Don't go in there! That would be unusual. Does that happen to you? Yeah, it did happen this morning, actually. There's apparently a clone of you who works in a shoe shop in Camden. Really? Someone sent me a message about it. Well, I'm glad he's doing so well for himself. If you want some <laughs> shoes and you're in the Camden area and you fancy buying them from someone who looks... A, a clone or just a bit like me? A bit like I, I don't think, think it's I a think he wants to look like you and he's dressed up as you. It's nice of you that he wants to look like me. I just wish he'd gone through the stages where I was all fat and homeless. You know, as well. <laughs> Maybe you did. Yeah, perhaps he was. Perhaps he was always there, silently, experiencing the things I experienced. So, um, right, yeah, Six Music. You can join in with this programme if you want. We're up at the Edinburgh Festival now, because me, Trev and Matt are doing our sitcom for Radio 2 up here. We're practising it. Also, I'm doing stand-up up here. Trev's doing stand-up this very afternoon, isn't Trev? I am at four o'clock in the wine bar at the Gilded Balloon. Four o'clock in the wine bar at the Gilded Balloon. So if <laughs> anyone in the Edinburgh area wanted to have a look at Trevor Clock at around four o'clock in a wine bar at the Gilded Trevor Balloon... Trevor Clock? That's my new name, that's my stage name. It's called him Trevor Clock. You know, all right, quite I, good, actually. I made a mistake, but, you know, I'm not prepared to go backwards on this one, I've guys. I've changed my well, name just Trevor he's made a Clock. Mistake. Talking that's of mistakes, he's... before we came in air, Trevor said we were at the Edinburgh Frigestival. <laughs> <laughs> we're at the Edible Frigestival! We're at an Edible Frigerator! Like he said, like, we go, we're trying to think of topics for the show, we still haven't. I think we should talk about S-E-X. Yeah, that's well, right, that's guys. that's a surprise. The old S-E-X. Mate. We could be talking about Tibetan monks and you'd still bring SEX Them into Them Tibetan monks have got a lot of dirty secrets up there, cassocks, I wouldn't mind warranting. Yeah, Them shiny heads oh, of theirs absolutely. could be used as body buffers. No, you can't say that. I'm not attacking Tibetan monks and I think that bloody China, they should withdraw. There. So <laughs> oh. I, should, I must never make uh, these sort of remarks because I'll often I'm just left-leaning. Right, I'm just left leaning, so I just. You're like, left leaning. I lean to the left on politics, right? Yeah, so but it, yeah, political but you... comes up. I'll just go right this way. Oh, I keep banging against the microphone. It's because I'm left leaning. The, the microphone is to the left of me. I keep leaning against it. So I will have just impulsive, ill-researched political views. And I'd like, if you are a listener of this show, just to say, well, that's just a, he's a young man. He's finding his way in the world. He doesn't know that much about China's occupation of Tibet, but intuitively feel that probably Tibet should not have another country. Yeah. No, no. It's, it's it. the shake of our syndrome. Uh, no, I'll tell you why he does it. Because mm. he thinks it makes him look sexually attractive. No, I don't. You do. You hold, what I think you makes hold... me look sexually attractive is my physical appearance and bad movement. These things make me sexy. That is not going to attract anyone, that dance. Well, that There's dance. only used to it. If there were more people here, people that had genitals, <laughs> let me tell you, they'll be releasing spores now out of their glands. He always says spores and genitals. There always. is nothing wrong with either spores or genitals. Jenny's Matt Morgan. He stands there, all tensed up like great. a little kid having a tantrum. He's got some sort of, you know, sort of neuronic connection between spores and I'm not seeing... Listen, shut up. I've not seen you guys for a week and I've missed you. Matt, where have you been? Cornwall. Why? Because it's nice. You've been there because it's nice. You went down to Cornwall, didn't you? You yes. little div. Did you have a nice time yeah, down there? Yeah, it's brilliant down there. Matt, well, your cultural, what's your cultural review going to be today? It's going to be on a little thing I like to call Cornwall. <laughs> Culturally review in an area. You can't culturally review an area. Right, mm, man. It's well, there's so much to do in Cornwall. <laughs> what was one Just of the things like you did? You're working for the Cornish oh, travel Went down board. a slate mine. You went down a slate mine. <laughs> yes. Don't get, don't get on it now. You'll spoil the cultural review. Right, yes. You know how he does. Yeah, Sometimes well, Matt won't even reveal the contents of the cultural review because he thinks people are sat at home on ten rooms. Well, they are what now. What will the Russ? cultural review be about? Is now they know there's a slate mine, mine involved. Well, that one. The whole of Cornwall's just lit up. Of course it has. They probably torch themselves rather than be associated with you. <laughs> well, let's, let's burn. Let's, somehow this place feels dirty now. No, they don't want independence. No. They just want their own demise now. Right. So I think. Yeah. Come on. 
Do you say, Trevor, do you not want to talk about sex because you can't well, I don't, think of a single sexual well, anecdote? Why can't we talk about <laughs> dinners we've had? Why do you want to talk about dinners you've had? Why do you not want to talk about dinners yes. we've had? Because I can't remember any dinners I've had. And That's why because can't all your you? dinners are stupid vegetarian bump. <laughs> because, because when you lot are having your dinners, I'm having sex. That's why. <laughs> because it's more entertaining. If someone gives me some sausage and mash, I make a bra out of the mash and I feed those sausages yes, into yes, every orifice. Go, go to the bam, go to the track. I'm not going to ban nothing. I've right, we, what we're doing, what we're talking. Come on, let's talk. Dinners, right. dinners. We all right, talk about dinner. Right, all right. We'll have a dual thing. If you want to talk about sexual experiences, the first time you had sex, the last time you had sex, the best time you had sex, the worst time you had sex. Text us on six four zero four six. Or if you want to talk about dinners you've had, text <laughs> us on six. Diddly I try, diddly I try, try. No, text us on six four zero four six for that as well. Then we we'll just let people decide. This show, Trevor Lock, yes. belongs to the listeners oh, of Six it. Music. It's not about our egos. Oh. Yeah. I don't know, perhaps you don't understand that, Trevor. I don't, know. Perhaps when you're doing your show at the Gilded Balloon at four o'clock in the wine bar, yeah. that is about your ego, <laughs> and that is why it'll be an utter sham, <laughs> I predict. And that's the only reason I'm going there, along with my associate, Matt Morgan, to watch you flounder. I'm going to sit in the front row, nude! Oh, nude! You. Yeah, that's right, Put nude! Put some clothes on. I will not wear I'll a stitch. I will not allow you into my auditorium if you're naked. Sometime. I'll wear the clothes on the way in, Trev. Oh. By all means, I'll wear them on the way in, oh, mate. Right. When are you going to take them off, then? The moment you start your trite <laughs> derivative show I will undress Trevor as the only way of entertaining myself wow. in a difficult and stressful time thank you very much you're coming aren't you Matt well not now I've heard you're going to be naked oh I'd butcher you I've seen, seen that once <laughs> <laughs> oh god if only it was only once dear oh dear and some of the that leave that hanging out there people Can, think we're hey baby I have left it hanging out there <laughs> that's half the problem and it does hang to the left it hangs all sorts of ways uh, me and Matt are interested in satanism now and we're thinking oh. about becoming satanists yeah. but that's another thing we've not researched very well so if you've been <laughs> negatively affected by satanism sorry in advance and if you've been positively affected by it I mean six, I'll be interested 6406 exactly. 64046. Six. That's the stuff, Matt. Yeah, I'm doing that sign of the devil now. I want you people to know it. So, um, yeah, also, someone's done a kiss and tell on old Russ today in uh, The People. It was quite, it's from a woman I had it off with about like nine years ago doing a kiss and tell on me. Blimey. Um, oh. Let me tell you, the years have not been kind. T yeah. Time's taken its toll. Old it Father Time has trud trudged across her boat race. Um, but like you know, hey, she said negative things about me. So um, okay, let's let's have a little bit of music. I think we're going to listen to a tricky doing that. I got a letter from the government the other. Day. I got a letter from the government the other day. <laughs> Opened it, <laughs> read it. I said my STD results were baffling them. <laughs> no, they're oh. fine. Oh Christ! So we, are you, yeah. that's your job now, is it, Matt? Pressing <laughs> that one green button. <laughs> yeah. Look at Matt Morgan is now perched, like hovering over it. one I tap button it five times, and then I actually press it. You get five little tappity taps, little and taps. then and then it go, yeah, and you go for the press. Don't mock my buttons, mate. I am mocking your buttons. You don't look, look at, like don't you know even look doing. over here. I'm, I'm looking ashamed at those of this. <laughs> this little be. rack. He normally, when we're down in London at Six Music Studios, he hovers above this smorgasbord of technological delights. It's beautiful, isn't it? It's like an aeroplane. It's like an aeroplane cockle pit. And now, yeah, look at this. See, it's, it's like the, it's like, Fisher Price sort yeah, of thing. But it's, it's because we're not in the main studio, it's because probably there's a, a more important radio show going on. I'd imagine we're not attacking people in Scotland. Hello, we'll have a tantrum lovely. starting. There's not a tantrum. There's not a tantrum. We've had about four tantrums what from the, Russell how today. How are they tantrums? Let's go. Let's run through. Should we run through, let's run through them? Let's run through. Let's run through. Let's run through the first tantrum of the yes. day. Yes. First tantrum of the day was uh, all right. We. I want the papers. I've got to have all the papers there. So that's not a tantrum. We no, no, no. Have the papers. This is the beginning of the tantrum. How's that a tantrum? No, so, the tantrum so there, there was the loads of things. Why has it been involved, included in the tantrum because list? We'll see in a minute. Now listen. <laughs> that slowed us down, and then. We, uh, someone phoned you and said, "Oh, we're we're on our way there." Well, I'm on my, I'm there now. I'm going back home. You went home. You <laughs> got he to went the back studio because no one was. There. If no one was there, I'm going back home. And there was people <laughs> here. Say in that Michael Winard voice. I'm did. going back home. I'm okay. going. How did you say? How did you say it? I said, oh, I'll probably pop off home then No, now. you didn't. You hadn't even left it. You were still in your hotel, exhausted, whilst the pair of you spent all night wrestling like D.H. Lawrence's <laughs> women in love, probably, stood by a fireplace, gripping each other by the undercarriage. That's just silly. Well, the women this is in not love a story about wrestling. me having t tantrums. This is a story about you two being late to the studio. I came me? here on time. You, I can't do nothing without you two here. You can come in here. You can, you can I prepare. get nervous if I don't see people that I know. <laughs> Stranger danger! Walk away! Stranger danger! Don't touch me! Stranger danger! Back to bed! Oh dear. You're not my uncle! You're not my uncle! I wish I had a button to stop all Bams, this. You've got a button. I've got Matt, hold on. A Come on. We've, we've, Hang on, so that's tension one. Right, that's we'll tension let you one off that has tension. already been dismissed as 
Unprofessionalism of cog leagues one. Yeah, cog, cog leagues. leagues. Cog leagues. Yeah, that's what you're. He's Trevor Clock, and you, pair of you, are clog leagues. <laughs> you're a league of Dutch footwear. Okay, should we so listen to what's music? What's Tantrum now? Two? Tantrum Two is probably the uh, music you didn't like. Oh, the music! Didn't put my music you in the like, playlist. You like loads of these records. Some of these bands you <laughs> introduced. Like some of these bands you introduced me to, and just because you didn't pick them first on this Sunday, <gasps> suddenly it's not your songs anymore, is it? I'm saying I, I picked, I, I eight picked songs. music, and they're not in the thing. And not frankly, here. when the mic, when you turn the mics on, I won't do the show. <laughs> I did not say when you turn. This time I'm a, a posh general sort of character. <laughs> uh, when, when the mics come on, I will simply look out the window and uh, muse about by the heads on the wall. I said it'd be good well, if the tracks I selected were in the we show. We said oh, we had to burn the songs and bring them up from London. Because, that, well, I simply left the presenting of the show in London. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> well, all that, listen, what you're actually exposing is that I love this show. I care about this show. Used to are late. The person that's in charge of putting the tracks together, I believe he's called John, has not put the <laughs> tracks together. You know, so essentially what I'm exposing is that Six Music is badly run. That's, a, that's all that's happening. I love the radio show. It's very good. And I will endeavour to do my best here. But for heaven's sakes, I can't carry everything. I've got a lot of pressure on it's me. It's heartbreaking. Trevor, turn your phone off, Trev! <laughs> what's wrong with you? Why, do you what's, why don't you understand the basic tenets of radio? Mate, I'm a maverick. I'm my own man. You are a maverick. That's you are your phone. own man. It's my own phone. Trevor, I'll let it go on. just put your clothes on, dear, and let's get on with the radio show. So we'll be either talking about sex or dinners. You decide to borrow a catchphrase. <laughs> Matt, you are right, mate? Yes. Looking uh, forward to your cultural review? Uh, yes. Why do you swallow sick, then, before you <laughs> add it? Are you looking forward to going through? Ooh, yes. It'll be nice. Trevor, stop fiddling with your phone. What's wrong with you? You. What's the matter? Well, it's like having Metal Mickey I'm... in the studio making toast, you bungling twerp. I like pressing the buttons. Do the Sonic. Oh, you're a lovely lad. That's because Trevor always wanted to be in charge of the buttons when we were deciding how to make this I radio did. show. And I thought he I did was in charge well. of them once and it was good. It was, it was a shambles. It wasn't, though, wasn't it? It wasn't. Was he was good at the thing. buttons. Do you remember that time when he put music on during the news? In that wasn't him. It, oh, yeah, it was him, wasn't it? Was it was Trevor, yeah. Trevor, Trevor just put did... music on during the news. And he was laughing. He was laughing, right? There'd been some tragedy or massacre across our Maverick planet. It. We need cheering up sometimes. Trevor, you being a maverick does not entitle. Here's a list of things that being a maverick does not entitle you to do. One, put music on in the news. Two, use children to experiment on in a variety of ways. That is the end of my list of things that being a maverick does not entail you to do. So we'll be talking about either sex or dinners. Uh, it's dependent on you. L l I'll tell you why, you know, I don't want to go on about as your father all the time. Look at this thing in the in the people today then, chaps. I've not read it yet, so, you know, it might be embarrassing. Are you sure you don't want to go on about as your father all the time? <laughs> no, I don't no. want to go on about it. I've got some papers here. <laughs> is, is that why you wanted... Did you know you were in them? Is that why you said you needed the papers? We always have the papers, don't we? But who, does someone phone you in the mornings and go, Ross, you're in the people? <laughs> no, no, I don't get phoned <laughs> up by Ted Maul from Brass Eye <laughs> and told that I'm in the people. Uh, right, here's this thing. This is about a girl I had it off with eight or nine years ago. Mamma mia, but Russell could not satisfy Elkie. TV so Russell... nothing's changed in nine years? Oh, you're hilarious, aren't you? Uh, here am I, one of the great sex people <laughs> <laughs> of Great Britain, and you have the gall to sit there drunk and insult oh, drunk. me. You're drunk, Matthew. I'm sober. Oddball, oh no, outrageous Big Brother host Russell Brand dumped a stunning Spanish girl halfway through a date so he could bed an ABBA tribute star. I don't remember that bit of it. Maybe because you were having dinner with her at the time. Dinners! It is a hot topic. People like having dinners, Trev, I've always said this. Dinners or sex, it's up to you, 64046. The self-styled love god, I'm not a self-styled love god. He's not a stylist, so... Is, yeah. <laughs> that style is lacquered on by team flunkies. <laughs> no, uh, like, you know, like... What it, like, I've not styled myself as a love god. I've not ever gone out and gone, I'd like to be regarded as a love god, if I may. Have I? It's ridiculous, isn't it? It's Never. ridiculous. Who are the other love gods? Uh, not like Charles Aphrodite Heston and stuff. And Venus. 
Uh, the self-styled love god was out on the town with a busty brunette when he spotted his old stage school crush, Elkie Hayward. Elkie Hayward. Elkie Hayward is the person that this uh, sex story is about. Brown was so desperate to get the Frieda in personality, uh, Elkie, into bed that he dumped his stunning date on the spot and got his mates to escort the tearful girl from the pub. I don't remember that happening, but then it was a long time ago and I was on drugs at the time. That's the difficult thing about having spent a lot of your life on drugs. People can accuse you of things and you don't know whether you've done them or not. Mm. Oh no, that was just an announcement. People can just make a I remember every second <laughs> it, yeah. of that drug hell. And let me tell you, nothing illegal took place except for the drugs themselves, which were bloody awful. Madcap TV host Brand, da 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 da, when he got his hand on Elkie's lovely 32 e Chiquitas, he turned out to be a big letdown. Honey Blonde Elkie, 33, who sings all the lyrics. Why are you keep going about her being, like, being in an ABBA tribute band? Well, she's got another side to her. She's not just one of your, you know, your little lovers, is she? She's got a full, rounded dimension to her She's agreed to sell the story if they'll promote the fact that she's in an ABBA exactly. tribute band. yeah. Obviously. Oh. Well, if you're interested in ABBA tribute bands, or just, if you want to listen a to ABBA, people are, listen to ABBA. A lot of people are. A lot of, people are. A lot of money in ABBA tributes. Right, I, I love it. It's got a bullet-pointed list of things. Made! Her go, Mamma Mia, when she saw his pasty white skinny body. <laughs> I've got a pasty white skinny body. I've got a nice little skinny yeah. body. And I'm not that skinny, as a matter of fact. Mm. There's been a lot of stories this week, well, three, of saying, like, saying Telly Bean Pole brand, that I'm too skinny and I'm a bad role model. No. Telly Bean Pole? Telly Bean Pole. That it sounds like as if you've got nice. that instead of an aerial. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a Telly Bean Pole. I mean, we had an aerial for a while, but it kept getting in my eyes. <laughs> telly Bean Pole made me go, right, uh, my body made her go mamma mia because it was all white skinny. And then another bullet point. This is, you know, when they in the papers they embolden a word to give it emphasis. I do, I do. Well, they've done it here. They've given it a bullet point and emboldened it for emphasis. Felt! That's not an aggressive word. Felt like sending out an SOS when he failed to satisfy her in bed. Left her screaming, gimme, gimme, gimme. <laughs> and then open brackets, another man after midnight, close brackets. After his performance lasted barely a minute. Barely a third of an ABBA song. But uh, you could listen to uh, the chorus probably in one verse. Yeah. A chorus of one verse, the sex would be down. This isn't true. Elk, uh, after barely a minute, he said he gave me a cocky striptease, revealing his <laughs> pasty white body. Right, the also the people phoned up, like they phoned me, they phoned me out and go, "Oh, you've got a story on you. It makes you look really good on that." Would you like to give a quote? And you read it, it says that I'm. Pasty and skinny and that, and I do sexy striptease. I would not have like. Who some, would do a striptease? Not me. Are you sure? I wouldn't, because I'm. You know me. I don't like dancing and things like uh, that. Oh yeah. yeah. Wouldn't he go, wouldn't do a striptease. He he'll pretend that, about some poetry or something. That's what he'd do. <laughs> pretend about some poetry. <laughs> you know there are poems in the world, don't you? Well, I wrote one of them. Anyway, about this sex we're having. Left it right, so he gave a cocky striptease. I and like I revealed my pasty white body that I don't have. I'm actually quite brown. You're swarthy. It's quite swarthy. brown. Swarthy. Yeah. yeah. Broad-shouldered. Yeah. Trim. Yeah. yeah Svelte. Yeah. Some would say. My name is. So I got. I got built like a tailor's dummy. Built like a tailor's dummy. That boy. You remind say. me of Heathcliff. Thank you. Yeah. It's me. It's Cathy. I've come home now. <laughs> it's very kind of you to say so. He was ever so attractive. Well, he was dusky, wasn't he? Some say dusky. he was the son of an Indian prince. Some say that, do they? Well, some did. I some mean, have been saying it. Well, she, 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 le she left it deliberately obscure. You know, Liverpool Good. then was a major port, wasn't it? Well, it's, I'm glad that some people say that. Right, we should go. He revealed his pasty white body, right, and this is the people said this is a positive story. I suddenly thought, what am I doing? But it was too late to turn back. He got me naked and pounded on top of me oh. like a rabid dog, oh. looking at me like those crazed eyes. I didn't pound on top of her like a rabid dog. Do you dog. remember this event? I remember this girl, Elkie. Do you remember this sexy. event? Was it a one-off? She came back. This is when I lived in, I lived in Wilsdon Green in London for a bit. It weren't a nice flat. I lived there with a couple of right nutters. They were people I went to drama school with, they were all right lads, really, but they were a bit balmy. We were, hey, we all were. It was crazy days. I took, her, I took her back home with me, this girl, and as I recall, it was just a relatively ordinary sexual uh, performance. I don't, you know, I wouldn't say it wasn't well, one. It the, was paste, girl. the pastiness, the dancing. It was all there. The strip, the pastry, pastry, <laughs> check, strip, check. <laughs> Pounding like a rabbit dog, check. Right, well, it's got all the tenants. Crazy eyes, <laughs> check, taxi Rolling home. Rolling around. Um, so, yeah, I mean, none of this weird <laughs> stuff happened. Crazy eyes. Our first romp, a romp. 
Oh. Our first romp. Oh, we had a romp. I'm trying to romp with my... Will you keep the noise down? My wife and I are having a romp. I remember, perhaps explain to a child the facts of life. Well, your mother and I romped. And then nine months later, you came out. Romp is not a very nice piece of language. Our first romp kind of lasted more than a minute, but I put it down to him being overexcited that he's probably got it with his school crush. It wasn't a school crush, it was just this girl. The singer with Abra Inferno. She thought it met him at Italia Conti where I went when I was 16, after school age, where she thought he was just a skinny, lippy boy. Nearly a decade later, Brown was starting to make his name on the stand-up comedy circuit when, she, when he ran into Elkie in a London pub. She said he had this stunning Spanish girl with him. He looked familiar, but I couldn't place it. Then my friend said it was Russell Brand. Suddenly bounded up to our table. I'm always being accused of bounding, bounding up to things. I don't boogie. bound. Bounding, boogieing. I don't bound or boogie. He minces, doesn't he? If does. any, I meander. He totters, actually. Me and Trevor yeah. were talking about... I the do white. not totter. You do, mate, like, with those heels. Russell bought me a pair of shoes that are like his shoes with high heels. And, er... Uh, Someone told me, uh, Kat told me... You like, totter! ...that you have to walk on your... the weight on your front of your foot. I don't... In high heels. But yeah. you don't. You have your weight in your heels and you totter about like a right dolly bird. I and, do not totter like a dolly and bird. And Edinburgh's mate. cobbled street, so you've yeah. got to watch out for that. Okay. We, we saw you last night tittering off into the distance. You should have looked after me last night. Well, you, you shouldn't have you walked into a us up without us coming in after I didn't you. stitch you up. I was behind you, people. I stopped to have my photo done. The bouncer done said, stop, people. wait there. And then we had to wait there because we're normal people. Then you went in like a film star. Why didn't you come and help me? I was very nearly... Didn't him. Someone touched me. <laughs> Did in they? an inexplicable way. I, I got a weird text in the middle before. of the night saying, yes. you must protect me in future. <laughs> <laughs> I got woken up and scrambled to my phone. Because you've gone home and abandoned all of us. Well, we meant to be friends. Us. You I was walked tired. in past a security guard who didn't recognise That us. was it. You'd already abandoned me at that point. We I was did. scrambling to get somewhere safe. We, we should have queued. Well, I was there, mate. It's a lovely evening. I was having ever such a nice time. It was pleasant. It was yeah, nice. Glad you enjoyed yourselves. Well, thank you. Listen, I don't know what's wrong with you today. Blah, blah, blah. Anyway, we'll do this. Should we have some news? We have to have and news. And then we'll, we've got to have some news, haven't we? And yeah. then we'll, like, we'll... Come back on the app. We'll just sex this. I mean, they call it news. Weird! But... It's got a photo of me, age 19, where they've cropped out the nice bits of my hair. Weird. Russell, age 19. <laughs> <laughs> weird! He was simply weird. That's all there is to it. What's this thing you whispered? Oh, right, this is a really funny bit. We've just still been reading that article. Text us on 64046. Turn your phone off. Turn your phone off. Yeah, I will turn it off. Yeah, but look, we're reading this uh, expose thing. You can text us on 64046 or my own phone if you like. Text us on 64046 or email us at russell.6music at bbc.co.uk. Uh, and what you can tell us about is either dinners, if you want, dinners you've or had. sex. <clears throat> Don't say dinners you've, dinners you've had. Dinners that you've had. Well, not imaginary dinners, that, dinners not dinners fantasy dinners. Dinners that you dare to have. Dinners you saw for a window, it's dinners you've had. Yeah. Like in a cartoon That'll be or next something. next week's topic. Pie cooling on a shelf. A pie on a shelf. Pies are never left to cool on a windowsill <laughs> like in the dandy, are they? I've looked at over nine windowsills in my life and only 7% of those had pies on. And yes, I did take that pie and I did run off and eat it with a sort of a neckerchief thing and it did have cow's horns coming out of it. And I'd do it again. I'd do it again, give it have a chance. So this uh, expose on me in the people by this bird, Elkie Haywood, time has not been kind, um, says... Uh, <laughs> oh, get her. Oh, blimey. Oh, look at you, dear. She says, I've got a skinny white... And so unless I, I've got to match something as cruel as skinny, pasty white body. But she's talking about don't, you in the past. Don't, don't turn the other cheek, Russ. Turn the other cheek, like Jesus. Well. Turn the other pale, skinny little cheek. <laughs> I can't keep turning my skinny little cheeks. One of the bloody things will fall off. <laughs> then pull your trousers up. Listen to this ridiculous bit of thing, right? Um, right, she goes to her, oh, then I, I went to her and goes, hey, are you Elkie Haywood from Italia Conti? As if, as if I would say that. Hey, are you Ronnie Wood? <laughs> <laughs> are, you, are you Elkie Haywood from Italia Conti? When I said yes, he stared at me intensely and revealed he used to have a massive crush on me. Then Elkie watched in amazement as Brand went back to his date, whispered something which made her cry, and then signalled to his mates to take her out. I'm not a gangster. I don't... Well, Take, yeah, that's odd. Go up to her, whisper something to me and make her cry. You will never be happy. You will die alone. <laughs> <laughs> Whisper as I was there and then signal to my mates to take her out. I've not got like, you know, then, that's like ten years ago. Even now I don't have anyone like that could exact that. I'm not a part of, of the you mafia. Could. Of course you could. Could I? I yeah, wouldn't do anything. With you, having a dinner with you, for example, and yeah. then you suddenly whisper and go, I'm bored of this dinner with you, I want to have dinner with her. Yeah. That would make someone cry, wouldn't it? Uh, yeah, but... <clears throat> I would never done that. 
I'm a nice I lad. would never done that. I would never done that now as our soul's album. That. He'll get it right. Guess what, though? Once during a dinner, this is a terrible thing, the girl I was with went to the, the, to the toilet. I went to the toilet. Back. No, I nicked her purse while she was in the lavvy. <laughs> what was I thinking? <laughs> <laughs> what was I thinking? Did you, what? And then, went, funny. then she, when she drugs. came back, you'd gone? No, I stayed for the rest of the day, you know, for with a bit her of far. And then, when, then, and then she went, oh, where's my purse? And you Goodness. went, I don't know. I don't know, it's terrible, isn't it, life? But I will seek it out. I'll get this purse back for you. I will not rest till this purse has been reclaimed. Did you, did you find it? Did you play the hero and give it, give it her back? No, just I found it. it, but all the money and cards have gone, but here it is. Here's the purse, anyway. If it's got any sentimental value, you could have it, I suppose. Actually, I also spent the... I mean, the villain spent any sentimental value that it could have had. The next... Anyway, back to this thing... She goes, all right, goes back, went to my mates to take out this girl that I've just whispered in the ear of. Elkie said, it was cruel, but I was enjoying his attention. Why should I cry? <laughs> <laughs> it was a bit cruel, but I thought, hey, hey, Elkie, do you want me to kick this deer to death for you? <laughs> <laughs> um, I, just, I just left a long-term relationship, so I thought, what the hell? He spent the next, next few hours plying me with beer and compliments, and I couldn't resist going back to his flat. Beer and compliments? You don't flow beer around. I, well, I think this is ten years ago. I, I know, but fl- you never used to drink beer, did you? Well, I'd drink vodka straight from the bottle, things like that. That's, that was more my scene, man. I remember that in your little handbag. <laughs> <laughs> your little bottle of vodka that you used to make sure everyone saw. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm oh that old thing. <laughs> it's 9am, but uh, I've drank almost half that. <laughs> I feel a bit sick, actually. <laughs> Someone take me home. Um, right, so I plied her with beer and took her back to my flat. I didn't do that. He took me straight to his bedroom and opened the door. There was a pile of crumpled, dirty clothes in one corner and a double mattress on the floor. It screamed out, Shag Pat! (laughs) Screams out poverty! (laughs) It doesn't scream out, Shag Welcome to the Shag Pat! If if it's dirty clothes or double mattresses, we've got something to cater for you! (laughs) Christ! Shag Pat. Shag Pat. Who wants that screamed out? It does scream dog's bed. We sat on the edge of the mattress. I can't see the word like it's a canyon. We sat on the edge of the mattress and surveyed the spectacular views available from there. The views of the pile of clothes and the UB40. We sat on the edge of the mattress. He gently kissed and fondled me. He was so obsessed with my big breasts, he couldn't look at my face. <laughs> That's not the only reason. No, bloody have you seen it? The face is in the paper. We sat on the edge of the da. No, she's, not, she's actually quite a nice girl. I'm only saying... Yeah, 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 no, fun. cool, yeah. Fine, yeah. Hey, yeah. we're all friends here. Why are you talking about Cliff Richard now? <laughs> I don't know. She's a really nice girl, so... Uh... Uh, she's a really nice girl, she's fun. Hey, if they're ever bored of Pumbledon, yeah, it starts raining. I'll entertain you, poor sods. Come on. <laughs> hey, Peggy Sue. <laughs> um, so... Uh, <laughs> I don't know, he mentions things like that. Then he stood up and started to do this cocky strip tease. Better than doing a strippy cock tease. Hey, we've had this bit. Look, he's mentioned twice. He said he wanted us naked as soon as possible. He was so flamboyant, but once he had his clothes off, I couldn't get his pasty white skinny body out of my mind. I didn't put it in her <laughs> mind. There was nothing to him anywhere. Nothing to him anywhere, suggesting there's something wrong with my lovely dinkle. After undressing me, he eased me onto the bed, manoeuvred me in this slightly awkward sideways position, and started panting and romping on top of me. It was weird. She remembers this well for nine years ago. Why has it suddenly come out now? What sort of... She's money in it now. She just got out of hospital or something. <laughs> the coma's only just subsided, Matt. It just took her a while to get over it. It was weird. It was over nearly as soon as it came, but I took it as a compliment. He was so pleased to have been with me after fancying me those years earlier. Next morning, Russell romped with her again in the same odd pose. I guess it was his favourite position. I don't know why. I was actually quite scared looking in those eyes of his. Why say things like that? There's nothing wrong with my eyes. How's she I've looking got... in your eyes if you're in, in this weird position? With... This is all lies. I've not got eyes all around the head like a tiara afterwards Russell insisted on holding her hand as he walked her to the tube oh, oh it sounds like I'm quite a nice a lad boy. walked her to the tube everything and made her promise to meet for a second date he seemed besotted like a puppy you know oh. how puppies are besotted with things oh yeah look at this puppy he's obsessed with renaissance art <laughs> <laughs> he seemed beso- I'm loud and mad and so is he and although he wasn't boyfriend material I agreed on a second date we met in a pub after a few beers I'd realised I'd missed my last train home so I gave him a chance to redeem himself got to his bedroom and all was going well then he launched into his rapid dog act again. <laughs> Got a rapid dog act. This story goes on forever. It's ridiculous. Nothing's happening in it. Da 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 da. Absolute lot of. Lot. And it actually doesn't have. You know, it doesn't. It's not clear that she's the wronged party. Well, she's not. She's just showing off. She's just weird. She Silly. said, that, oh, he wanted no to hold my hand. There's no point to it. It doesn't. There's no point to it. It's not clear. Give me some money because once I did it with him. 
I was a nice lad. I was just trying my hardest. And I can't. I don't know if I was as good at sex then as I am now, but I know I would have tried my hardest. That's, that's, all, would have that's done. all anyone like can do. Like any rabid it? dog does. I mean, they do, those all rabid us dogs. rabid dogs want They're is focused. to pass on rabies and to get the bloody job done. And by Jove, we'll do it. Hold up, we've got some text messages. Hey, Russell, you actually rated number 42 in the world's 100 sexiest men <laughs> in Company magazine. Love, Katie. Number 42. I wonder who's it. Was it 100? There's 142. That's all right. It's not bad. It's disappointingly though, really. Well, you've come on a long way since you were a, a weird 19-year-old. When I was a weird, pasty, skinny 19-year-old. I really like gammon. <laughs> Thanks. That's from Mikey F. See, dinners. It's the ah, thing. Ah, dinners. I wondered why he was saying it. He likes gammon. Yeah, I, I remember gammon. You'd have that when you were younger. There's ham, isn't it? It's thick of, bits of ham. Bit of pineapple bit of fat on around it. it. A bit yeah. of pineapple, yeah. Da, 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 da. I read Russell has rented a flat in Edinburgh specifically for seduction. I want to know how it's specifically designed for rude, rudeness so I can imagine it to embellish my own sexual fantasies. Yeah. You've made Sundays better with your hilarious rantings. Love, Michelle and Chingford. I need to talk to you about this flat. Yes. Well, the flat ain't like how it said in the News of the World the other week. It's oh, just a normal that is flat. A disappointment. Because me and Trevor, uh, yeah. there's Come no hotel us. for us. We've got to live with you. Now, why are you under my roof, you lads? You live by my rules. Here are just a few of them. Trousers and pants will be removed at the door. I will expect you to remain taut and buoyant <laughs> at all times. I never know when I might want to spike myself. Um, that's ridiculous. I know, I'm only joking. What, I didn't mean so it. is there more than one room, or are we all... Actually, there's two bedrooms. One's for me. You, yeah. And right, so me and Trevor are sharing a bed. Sharing a bed, yes. What's this? And your mum's staying there as well? She's oh, not sleeping with you <laughs> two. She ain't here yet. If this is you angering to have <laughs> sex with my mother, Matt, for Christ's sake, I've yeah. given you everything. Oh, I'm so, I love these two so much, and now they, but they keep pushing the boundaries. I've just got greedy. He literally... I mean, you have been like a father to me, but I still don't want you to have sex with my mother. <laughs> no. I mean, you know, there's there's got to be... And, and you have Obviously, to be, so I'm, talking talking about space. I'm talking, what, about, talking space. about space. What, are you talking about space? The final frontier? Yes. Wormholes. Well, we all got... Everyone who knows you has been packed into your spare room. G's in there at the moment, poet of the show. He he's staying tonight as well. Does but he like have to a... write a poem about so what goes I... on in your flat? No, he does not. If he writes a poem about that, write... all our careers will be destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> now nothing but goes on in that flat. I've not done anything. Are me and Trevor staying there tonight. Yeah, so it's going to be lovely. We're all living together, flatmates. That would be a good topic for yeah, a show. Yeah, you've got your it? own bedroom. Yeah, me. The best well, we've got our own bedroom. <laughs> Me, you and G. Me, you and G. You, lads. You're three of you. You're going to be like the original odd couple, but there'll be three of you. It'll be brilliant. The best sex I have, Russ, is with anyone as long as I pretend it's you. Oh, thank you, Deborah of Birmingham. Oh, don't read things like that out. Well, all she has to do is imagine a skinny, pasty body and then a rabid dog rutting at her side. <laughs> <laughs> and you can accurately recreate that. The people have printed a phone number there. Let's ring up the people and pretend that we're well, someone. Don't say it, because then oh, they'll right. prepare oh, themselves. Yeah. People, we are not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> you silly sods, we actually are. Yeah, we'll ring up the people and we'll pretend to be someone doing a kiss and tell. We've done it before with the mirror. That went well, except once we let Trevor do it. It was something absolute farce. That got in the paper, the one I did. Yeah, I know, Trevor. Uh, it said, Muse uh, six music show disappoints listeners with <laughs> contrived phone call. <laughs> that was good, actually. You have oh. to eat dinners to have the energy to have sex. That's what I find, says Addy. That's a very good point. The two things are connected. I'd like to talk about sexual dinners. That's my aim for the morning. I had a telly bean pole, but I couldn't pick up Channel 5. I cried. Much love. Sally from Liverpool. Ah, people all over the country listening to us. Disappointed. <laughs> Enjoying the show. <laughs> so, yeah, text us on 64046. Send us emails on Russell. You know that email address. Don't make me say it out there because it makes me feel confused. Noel Gallagher's going to be on the show later. That'd be nice. We've spoken to Noel for ages. Mm. Apparently, he's a bit ill. He's got flu, but also he's recently got back from Ibiza. What a coincidence. Mm. Oh, suddenly feels all ill, but he's just got back from Ibiza. Oh, yeah, that'd be flu then. Yeah. What else would it be? I remember when Jimi Hendrix died of the flu. <laughs> Terrible time. <laughs> Um, yeah, well, I don't know. That'd be nice to have a chat with Noel Gallagher. We're doing a competition for Six Music a little bit later in the show. Matt's got his cultural review. Trevor's going to be doing his Sonic Enigma. Competition winners from last week are here, Paul and Mark. They're going to be joining us for the Sonic Enigma. G will be doing one of his poems. We've got Jen Brister. She's a comic who's at the Edinburgh Festival. She's coming on. Lots of people will turn up here. It's going to be a right bloody laugh. <laughs> So, uh, we're talking about sex and dinners, it seems. We've had a whole host of emails. We've got to call up the people. We'll do that in the next link, all right? Uh, but look, let's have a little chat about some of these emails. Hi, Russell, Matt and Trev, says Sheila Van Loo. Hey, Sheila. Hey, I Sheila. love the show and listen every week, but you're treading on dodgy ground this morning. I'm a Cornish girly, and us Cornish are proud people, so don't slag us off, matey. I'm we're not going not, to. 
Uh, Matt, are you going to slag them off in your cultural well, review? I'm considering moving to Cornwall. It's a lovely place. I went there once. I liked it there. Cornwall, we're not slagging off anywhere in Great Britain. We love this country and all the countries of Earth, in fact. I think you should combine <laughs> the concepts of sex and dinners. It would be best of both worlds, says Sebastian in Manchester. Well, what do you mean? Have no, you ever I mean. used food in sex? Yeah, I always get distracted nah, by the food or nah. the sex, you know. Because if you're eating some chocolate off of someone's legs, you're sort of, I'm thinking, mm, nice Is chocolate. It? You know, I don't, if... I think it spoils the chocolate and it spoils the legs. Oh, Trevor! You shouldn't be having sex anyway. Look at you, you ridiculous creature. Four o'clock, Gilded Balloon <laughs> Wine Bar. Trevor Locke will be telling us about his sex life. That won't take long, but it will make you vomit in your own mouth. That's Trevor Locke's sex life. Four o'clock at the Gilded Balloon <laughs> Wine Bar. Buy a ticket. Are there any tickets available yet, Trev? There, Still. There, are, there are none left. Yes, there are. There are loads left. What's They're the phone number? There's some left. What's the phone number to get tickets? Uh, oh, I don't know. I you idiot. Ready. Just oh. going, oh. Oh, just dial O and see what happens to you. 0131 You liar. You don't know the number. make up a number. Gildy Balloon, get down there. I'm going to be there. Matt's going to be down there. Promises to be one of the disappointing experiences of the Fringe Festival. That. I've got two uh, tickets to give away on this show. Oh, it's a competition. What's yeah. the, all right, let's do a competition about yeah, it. You I'll can text on 6406 or you can email us. What is the, what's the, how are they going to win them, Trev? I'm going to think of a competition in a Let's minute. think of the competition now. All Come right, on, we're well, radio people. We're meant to be innovative young radio should makers. Should it be a competition where there's an answer that's correct or should it be a competition oh, where... Oh, you dither into it. Should it be? <laughs> should it be? Can I this? Can I that? Well, there I, you are. I rubbed someone once and I think I want to marry her. Trevor, you've got to learn to make decisions for yourself. I can't hold your hand or any other part of you for the rest of your life, can I? You can't can even I? do it for five minutes. I five can't, minutes, Trevor. All I, ask. I don't want five to minutes. hold on to you. That public toilet was frightening. Tre you, Trevor's to trousers were once found in a public toilet. Do you remember that yes. episode of this wasn't show? It wasn't a public toilet, it He's was a pub. Toilet. What? It pub? was a toilet, toilet, toilet Trevor. The word toilet was in it. I it... changed in the toilet. I went to change. You the changed toilet. into a pervert, and you've never been the same since. And it's sickening. So, good. so you need to set up a competition. Yeah. Right. Right. Come on, Matt. You're good at thinking. I, I think. It... <laughs> <laughs> think, I think one of those thoughts you think. If you can name Boy. the name of a previous show that I've done at the Edinburgh Festival, then Don't... you'll win two. Oh, so no one boring. cares. Well, they've got, just got to Google you. Hold on. What you could do is think of something that Trevor has to do in his show. Like he has yeah, to. He's got to do something. Part. He can do something in his stand-up act. You know, okay. you can, he'll do five minutes right. talking about a subject that you'll name. Fine. And will the one we pick, you're the winner. We'll have to Done. give away loads of them just to get a bloody audience. Now, actually, the tickets are selling that well, selling aren't out, they? It's a hot ticket. Trevor is a brilliant stand-up comedian. He I mean, is. I, I, very good last night. We watched night. you last Thank night, didn't we, Trev? Thank you very much very for coming good. along. Performing in a church. Yes. <laughs> who, who's that bloke? Matt said he's a cross between Peter Tatchell and Neil Tennant. What was his name? Well, his name is Peter Tennant. That's there what, you are. Perfect. That's <laughs> why I said that. It was just purely on his name. Oh, I see. I see. But as it turned out, he was a cross between those two he things. He was a bit, wasn't he? He's like one of them camp comics, wasn't he? He's a yeah. singer. He's oh, a... right, he was a singer. He's yeah, a singer. That was a singer where comedian. He, the man played the piano and he sang the song. Do you remember that I one? Just, all I remember was just trying to get... <laughs> I was just gripping my seat, <laughs> praying for the experience to pass. No, no, it was good. I enjoyed it. It was great. I had a nice evening. Um, then Trevor came on. Now, what, <laughs> what was that you were doing? <laughs> <laughs> it was expressive dance, wasn't it? We were all very worried. He came out brandishing the microphone as if it were a he weapon. He came out with such aggression. Incredibly He's a different person to, to the person he is on the show. I shouldn't have been that aggressive, should I? It's a different persona. At one point, I leaned over to to Matthew and I goes what exactly is he trying to emphasise here As what part of his character is he using what madness. is this about but it was good it's really it was brilliant it's a I like that part of Christmas stuff don't ruin it that's a really good joke yeah, it was, yeah there's loads of good jokes but what I think is oh Trevor you, are you an unhappy person yeah of course I am well good there's an email here from Luke Gray <laughs> he goes hello other forms of welcoming are available good to get into the oh, nomenclature of the, of the show I've been picking I've been picking on the wrong fella, so I've decided to bully bully on someone else, someone more deserving. Don't worry, Russell, it's not you, as you're a comedy hero of old Luke's, but it's in fact morbid moany Matt Morgan. I just really don't like him, plus a girl which I like fancies him, which angers up the blood, and I will now have to experience the kind of challenge, have him experience the kind of challenges that Trevor endured. One, cut off a bit of Trevor's hair and eat it, Matt. The hair he chooses can be from anywhere on his body. That's original. Two. Just tape <laughs> the same tape 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 Didn't Trevor actually do. eat your hair once because yes. of Luke? Yeah. Tape sellotape on Matt's eyeballs, giving him a sort of retina wax job. Ruby would be proud. Three. Get some paper and give Matt paper cuts in different parts of his body, e.g. tongue, eyelid, willy, etc. Trevor, I'm worried about Luke. Why doesn't Luke come down here and I'll fight him? <laughs> <laughs> There's a challenge. He would like Luke, that. Matt, don't be so aggressive to our listeners. Luke's a nice lad. I've got a text from Luke. I've got a text from Luke here. He's nice. He's playful. He likes you really. 
he admires you. He's a young man. He Come doesn't. On, he give said, a break. He doesn't like, admire you. Oh, go on. <laughs> listen, listen what he's texted me. Yeah. We should talk about how annoying Matt Morgan is. Poke him See? in the eye and Matt's read the brilliant. challenges. The Swan. The Swan. Interesting. Right, well, meddling with our things. Yeah. My Matt, declare stands. your hatred for Scotland and the Red Hot Chili Peppers, even though you like both of these things. Lick the road outside. Just Stop ignore him. He's silly. Luke. Look, I like Luke, as a matter of fact, and I think he's joking. I think he loves you, Matt. How could anybody not unless he's they've met you? He's just jealous because he's nicked his bird off him. Have, Have you I? been... Matthew. Matthew! What kind of life you're living, Sam? Who's his bird? I don't what know. Are you talking about? Here's a message from... You. Shut up, you weirdos. Here's a message here from Jen. It goes, uh, not Jen Brister, the comedian who's coming on our show in a minute. Someone else. Imagine that. Same name. Different people. What kind of crazy well, world we're living in surely now? there's more names to go round. Surely. There's Isn't enough it? names. Almost any sound could be a name. And yet there's no one yet called... Cat wheel, and I think it's a sad thing for our culture. I'm a 22 year old vegetarian virgin. No, you're not. I know, but this person, Jen, is. Uh. I'm a 22 year old vegetarian virgin. What does that mean? She's she hasn't never had, had vegetarian food, food. She's or had she's vegetarian a virgin. Food, or she uses vegetarian. F no. no. She Exciting, hasn't yet. says yeah. Hal Jenny. All well, her well cucumbers done, are intact. She probably is a virgin. Well, good. You know, what do you, is that a challenge, Matt? Have I got, a a, must I have sex with every virgin <laughs> in this country? I mustn't. Hello, boys, says Paul Ridley. I often like to enjoy my dinner with a bit of sex. A lot of people are talking about this combination, and Sitting God bless them for that. Only last night I combined gobbling down my dinner of carrots, parsnips, and a pork sausage with having sex with my wife. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I find you have to be careful with the gravy, however. That's Paul. Nice one, Paul. That's a good contribution, mate. Thanks. I don't think you can do it. I don't think it's actually possible. I think these are funny ideas, but I don't think it's possible. Well, let's think about times we've involved... Like, some people like to have mayonnaise in sex because sure, it's savoury. Sure, that is not having your dinner, is it? I mean, mayonnaise... Who would have just mayonnaise? It's a condiment at exactly, best. Exactly. Honey, exactly. I've... Hon used honey, you've used honey horrible. too sticky goes too everywhere. Much, honey in hair, who needs that? Honey in hair is not nice. Honey in hair is a revolting thing. Uh, right, I've never done it. I've not. Let me think. Uh, no. Oh, oh yeah. The I once had a shepherd's pie off of someone's back. Yeah. Chocolate. Do you remember that chocolate fountain? Oh yeah, that was good. Me and Matt once was. Uh, <laughs> don't say it until we're not to. We were at a party once for a TV coming. There's a chocolate fountain there. Matt goes, "Oh, let's get this girl over here." No, right, we didn't. Like, yes, the girl came did. over. Right, and then there's a chocolate fountain, and we was all dabbing bits of chocolate on our faces. Then we all went home together, <laughs> the three of us. And I think things happened of a sexual nature, didn't they, Matt? Me, I, you, and a girl, I all nude in a room. What happened to the chocolate? She's dead now. Oh, the, no, the chocolate. And the, the girl's all right. She's had a lovely time in the chocolate. We left it there, Trev. It was attached to a fountain. It weren't oh, ours. It's a lovely party. And nice, that girl. We I had don't a... really remember that. But anyway. You were drunk. I'll That's just... why. I had to do it sober. At one point, I... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, move on, you idiot. <laughs> well, it's nice to... It's all right to have consensual threesomes. It's a laugh. I also, I'd like to make it very clear that me and Matt didn't touch each other during that. We're not those sort of boys. <laughs> I thought you did. <laughs> no, uh, well, once, but inadvertently, just because of... Caused an argument. Just because of body geography. <laughs> Yeah, and once, oh yeah, then once. Yes, come on, move on. Something went on Matt's leg. And he, he got ever so aggressive and tried to do a tit for tat attack <laughs> back afterwards. The girl said, this is, then. She goes, This is ruining the atmosphere. Matt's using sex as a weapon. Lies. Bizarre fantasies you have. <laughs> you brought it up, you silly sod. Why would you, when he was, he must have been in your head when you reminded me of that. Oh, Russell will tell this story yeah, now. Who cares? I'm, who cares? We'll all be dead soon. Past, we're going to be Satanist soon. So I we don't want to move in with you guys now. You are living in a room with Matt Morgan. Please, and if you're in the boy. Edinburgh area and you have a spare room, I would Don't relish. let I'd Trevor, let that, me tell you'll you. You'll be living with some killer fan. Yeah. It'll be like misery. Be, it will be like misery, especially for the fan, having a part with you in their house. <laughs> <laughs> Absolute woe it'll be. OK, text on 64046, email us if you want. Remember Trevor's competition to get tickets for Trevor's show. competition? Suggest something that Trevor has to talk about for one minute during the show. One minute, I'll do one and then minute. Trevor, well, we'll, if you win, Trevor will talk about minute. it. Yes. No, not on the show, in oh, his right. show. Oh, OK. In the stand-up, then you get to come to the gig, see him explore that theme for one That's minute. That's quite good. That's quite good. Got That's a good idea. Good price. Good idea. Hey, I'm an innovative young TV guy. And this is radio, is it, what we're doing now? I, I don't know. So. It's all lovely anyway. I like talking to people. It's great fun. <laughs> right, so uh, that was good, because that was all coming all around the country has to be involved in that chaos. So, uh, yeah, you listen to Russell Brand on Six Music, and me as Matt Morgan. You right, Matt? Yeah, 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 a bit embarrassed. Why are you embarrassed? Because no, oh, of the threesome way. story. I don't yeah. worry about that. You said that you're a Satanist now. You don't have to care about anything. Trev, are you all right, dear? I'm very well, mate. I'm very uh, chip chop. Looking forward to the show. <laughs> <laughs> you're chip chop, are you? Yeah, that's yeah, so you're so thing. upbeat, they're inventing words. Yeah. 
Crikey, yeah. it's like Shakespeare with something like you, but I imagine well, you must have yeah. had some talent as well. So you're, you're doing a show at four o'clock, Gilded Bloom Wine Bar. We can get tickets. There's that, that competition is text us something that Trevor has to talk about for one minute during his show. If we like your one minute best, you will get free tickets to come and see the show, Absolutely. which is at four o'clock at the Gilded Balloon yeah. today. We're doing a contest now. It's called the Indian Summer Competition. All this week on Six Music. <laughs> that little boy reading out assembly. <laughs> Doing a contest, contest now. now. It's an Indian summer contest. We're giving you a chance to win tickets to Scotland's newest music event. Why? That's Indian summer, of course. <laughs> it takes place in Victoria Park in Glasgow's West End and features Yeah Yeah Yeah's The Fall, Yola Tengo, Hot Chip, Guillemots, and Anthony and the Johnsons, and others. There will be other people. That's not all of them. Don't think, oh, it's just them. I'm not going to go. Well, that's pretty good. That's line-ups. good. Like yeah that Yeah Yeah's, Hot Chip, Guillemots, and Anthony and the Johnsons, all good people. People. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're free on say, if you're free, this is lovely because I'm reading this off a bit of paper in case. I mean, I think I hid it quite well, but here is the sound of that paper. If you're free on Saturday the second, are you free? Have a look. If you're free on the second and third uh, of September, you can make your way to, and can make your way to Glasgow. That's their way of saying we're not paying for the transport, so forget about that. You can get yourself there. Or perhaps you're already there. Maybe uh, live there. This is good. If you're in Glasgow you're now, Glaswegian. You'll, do you guess what, right? Uh, honestly, I shouldn't say it, but if you're from Glasgow, then you have a higher chance of winning because they'll look at it and go, look, this person's already in Glasgow. Let them win. Well, they will. That's the way it do works. Do you think that's the way the world works? Matt, I'm sorry to say that is the oh, world we live in. Oh, God. Are you cynic? Am I, I'm not I cynic. I'm an optimist. I'm going to be cynical, and I think that's... Matt's I don't a cynical think so. one. I think if they get the right answer to the question, they've they'll got be a given chance. the tickets, no questions asked, yeah, and but they can on. do what they want. If can... you're down in Cornwall, you know you've got to pay to get up to this Oi, thing. Slap don't talk about Cornwall. Slap oh, I love Cornwall! What are you saying, Trevor? Slap them on eBay. Slap them on eBay, the tickets. Cornwall. That's not isn't Cornwall. No, the tickets. Make a profit out of it. Oh, true. Make Trev. profit out of something that's like been done. It's daily on the art. show. Why do you see everything about people? Everything's about money, isn't it, Trevor? Everything's about money. Ultimately. Or... <laughs> right, come on, finish this competition right. thing. Right, there's three questions. Right, let's choose which question is between us. The question key would be which Scottish city has an international festival as well as a fringe? Well, that's obvious, isn't it? Because we're at that festival well, now. Well, let's not have that question then. Well, you think it's too obvious? Too so obvious. we can reveal the answer. It's yeah. Edinburgh. Oh, right. God. It's not going to be that one. That is not going to be the question. Or the question could be, Prestwick Airport was the only place in the UK ever visited by which singing icon? That's easy. A lot of icons don't sing. They would just it's... stand about. Yeah, go on. That's quite pick... a good one, I think. Uh, no, right, right, so far that's in the lead, because we're not going to do the one okay. that's... The I think most people know that. It. Most people know it. Yeah, but they have to do one that people know, because otherwise people won't ring in, and this They've is probably a revenue-making device. They've got the internet, the internet. they've got reference books... Well, you're the one who asked a boring question about your yeah, past shows. Yeah, that was shows. boring. We should, can you name one of my previous fringe well, shows? Well, because at least what I get a t-shirt, which I'm wearing on my final show, yeah, Edinburgh 2002. At least 2002. I've got some people that like me in the audience, rather than people that are going to come along and, you know, Trevor take their gets, clothes off Trevor and gets hate wince mail on his MySpace account, which he essentially uses as a grooming network. And then one of the people say things like, Eat your fudge, you C-word. Of all the things to call Trevor Locke, if you could see this man's angelic, Ali, what Na- Noel Gallagher himself described as Ali Jones, but a bit more of a tosser. If you could see his little boat race, you'd think, oh, no. how can anyone call him a C-word? That's why I'm trying to quell the hatred for me now. You're trying to quell Before, the hatred I don't want it to get to those levels. Oh, what, you Because Luke's trying to strike up yeah. hating you. Oh, just I, I like Luke, really. He's all right. Oh, they, li- Tell Luke's Matt nice lad. that I will fight him with all Luke's might. All the, talk about how talk about yeah, yourself in the third oh person. Dear, that's a nasty little thing he says at the end. See, I think that let's have a big fight, <laughs> Matthew. We don't want to organise fights on our radio show. We're lovers, not fighters. In the words of Michael Jackson, and it never did him any harm, did it? Did it? Can Is anyone it? remember an instance where that <laughs> philosophy got Michael Jackson in trouble? <laughs> Even one little example. None of us can. Let's move on. <laughs> Indian summer. So, oh, yeah, yeah, right, this, this content. One. All right, the third. Question could be which Scottish band included the Reed brothers in their lineup? Oh, well. Right, maybe we could do that one because it's related to Scotland. It's very it's related to Scotland. So they're all related to Scotland, actually. <laughs> well, no. The, it's number oh, yes, two, they are. He doesn't, he, doesn't, he doesn't know that there's a place in Scotland. <laughs> I don't know about airports, mate. I've been out living my life, ripping it up, baby. Not going, oh, I wonder where the airports are. Talking about airports, the security oh, to get talking up about, here. Why do you keep going? I've noticed you going lately. That's professional talking radio, airports, mate. Why don't you just go? What is security? Uh, say what you're going to say about security no, being stepped up like because we're <laughs> under the threat of international terror and complain because you had to take your. Just 
YouTube shoes up off. here on business class. I didn't sail up here on business class. I came up here on economy. That was Did a potential that you didn't even have to witness. <laughs> Helen, who works with me, go, Helen goes, we're getting on that flight. Because <laughs> they went, uh, well, I goes, is it, uh, why well, well, we're getting the tickets? Is it uh, economy or business class? And I went, economy. And Helen went, we're getting on that flight. <laughs> really? And I went, Okay, and I just thought, because someone tells me what to do, I'll, sometimes I'll just do the right thing, you know. Sometimes. I don't sometimes mind, it was alright, it didn't make that much difference. And remember, I used to be poor, so I'm not bothered What about, about our it. cheeky fun bus that's coming back down Oh my God, we're travelling back down on what can only be described as a logistics nightmare. We're like, you know, it's, it's a bit rocky, we're coming back, we're coming, we're travelling from Scotland. Next week we're at the Reading Festival and we're travelling from, uh, here, from here in Edinburgh, where we are, to Reading, on a cheeky little fun bus, but we've all got beds on it, but they're, they're trying Have to hire this bus. It's been like people have been like trying to conjure up a new colour. It was just like people that like, just <laughs> completely unable to do it. The, the bus was initially suggested. It did like there's five of us travelling down, and it goes. Does it sleep five people? Yes, it sleeps five people. Are there any conditions for that? Yes. What are the conditions? That four of those people will be in the same bed, and the fun bus must be stationary. <laughs> what kind of fun bus is it? What kind of fun is that? For Christ's sake. Anyway, if you want to talk about dinners or sex, text us on six four zero four six. Noel Gallagher's going to have a chat yes. with us. Do the later. Competition. Trevor Lock, if you want to come to see Trevor's show. And, oh, this one. Oh, we right, are Indian so summer. What's, what question do you want it to be? Do the you want Reed it to be brothers. the Reed answer? Brothers. Reed brothers. Reed brothers. The Reed brothers, well, I'm not the Elvis Presley so answer. Read it out, set, do the setup and then read out right. the question. All then. right. If you want to go to this thing in Victoria Park, Glasgow, festival, where the Yeah, Yeah, Yeah's will be, La, Yo La Tango, Hot Chip, Guillemots, all that, if you want to come, it'll be a brilliant festival, I'm sure. Do you've got to tell us the answer to this inquiry that I'm about to make? Excuse me, which Scottish band included the Reed Brothers in their lineup? And the answer to that is something that is written down, and I really find it hard not to read out. I don't know why. <laughs> Call us on 08700 100 600, or text us on 64046, the normal thing, or email us on that normal email that you can, and then you could win that. Also, you could win that cocky Trevor Lockie thing. So if you want to end any of our contests, do. That is the only advice I can offer you. So, uh, yeah, there you go. So you can go to that thing if you want. I advise people of the, in the north part of these islands to pay particular attention to that competition because there's more chance of you actually getting it. So, right, so what else have we got to do? Matt's Cultural Reviews coming up. Cocky Trevor Lockie is going to be doing the Sonic Enigma. Jen Brister, comedian here at the Fringe, doing very well this year, is going to be coming on our show talking to us about stuff. Well, Trevor, why is your mouth aghast and open? What's I'm the problem? I'm shocked at those news that you've just told us. News is already plural, you imbecile! No. What's wrong with you, Trevor? Next we'll be talking about sheeps or something, and probably in a context that will sicken all animal lovers. You poor, poor man. What should we do? A I'm new from record. Barcelona, we're have from Barcelona. Have you, heard it? have you heard it? I've not heard I'm from Barcelona. Oh, it sounds, like from Barcelona. It sounds like a novelty record. Mate, it's Does a good, good, no, it's a good I'm record. I'm from Barcelona by We're From Barcelona. I love this, right, I love this record. Right, what should we call our record? I'm from Barcelona. What should we call our band? We're from Barcelona. Mate. What are you doing now? I'm going to Barcelona. Well, What's your favourite football team? I mean, like, the, the, okay, well, let's not judge. Yeah, let's judge a man by his work. Mm -hmm. a, a system that led to this verdict on Trevor Locke. Utter crap. <laughs> now, let's listen to that. Uh, hold on. Let's Barcelona. peel this back. How dare Trevor you say Locke, that? We love Trevor Locke. Four o'clock, the Gilded Balloon Wine Bar. Still might be tickets remaining. Send in your answer to that competition. We'll all be there. It's going to be the I event of the fringe. I don't if know by if it's event, you mean disappointment. What's that? I don't know if it's my headphones, but... What's the matter? He is shouting, Matthew. Yes, he is shouting. Yes, he is shouting. I, I will shout, Matthew. People will shout. If you have secret threesomes, expect to be shouted at. That secret. is the way the world works. <laughs> Where you go, oh, I hope my mum's not listening. Do you, you know, you won't bother at the time, were you? Well, well, there wasn't very much chance of my mum listening to that, was there? Well, I was recording some of it, and I do send <laughs> Sue Morgan <laughs> tapes of most of our sexual activities. That poor woman. This is Six Music. Got a text message here. It's Russell Brown on Six Music, incidentally. We have Matt Morgan and Trevor Locke. That's with those people just talking just now. I apologise for those in advance. <laughs> I had sex with a dinner lady once, and oh. then she made me chocolate concrete. It was nice. Steve-O from Brum. Is that true? I wonder, Steve-O, I'd like to know, mate, were you at school when you had it off with a dinner lady? And were, I, were you not. a headmaster at the time? And dinner ladies at my school, nice though they were, I wouldn't have wanted to have it off with them. The no. Most of mine were in their 60s. They were like nans. They were like nans. They were in a category with a nan. If you yeah. fell over and hurt your knee, they cleaned you up. They cleaned you up. They, they were nice. They put you back on the road to right. I just had a memory of a story about you and a dinner. Go on. What about that di old man's dinner you stole? What old man's dinner that I stole? Oh. Old Champneys. Oh, God, I went to this elf spa and I wasn't very well. I was very tired. I'd not had no dinner. So, what, everything he tells has got some big, huge story. <laughs> oh, yeah, he's always. Before. I was on drugs. I was <laughs> drunk. Um, I had a difficult childhood. So, this is post drugs, wasn't it? 
All right. Just flag that up. Yeah, it was. I went down to this health spa. You got there, you couldn't, they wouldn't let you have no food. Right, I go, can I have some food? I'm hungry. And the bloke, and they go, no, there's no food here because we're health spa. You have to eat at, at times that we allocate. And I goes, well, look. I'm hungry. And they goes, oh, we could probably get you a pop out and get you a sandwich. Because I don't want to say from a garage forecourt, come to this spa. Mm. Get yeah, us a what was your voice like when you said that? I want something from a garage forecourt. We're a spa, for Christ's sake. And then, like, we go, and then, the then sort of went to the restaurant and go, like, um, OK, well, we'll try and get something for you. Like, what do you want? It was this little old doddery old man that they'd give a job. So, he'd, you know how they sometimes give old people jobs just so they cling on to life for a bit longer? Don't say they that. Do what if do one that. of them's listening and then has a moment of realisation and dies? <laughs> That would be terrible. That would be, terrible. That'd be, be a wrong. release, if anything. A like. release. Death might not be bad. Let's uh, not forget that. Well. <laughs> None of us know what lies in that undiscovered Do you know country. What Pluto said? What do you say, mate? He what do you say? Death is not the worst thing that can befall a man. Right, and that's not my words, Plato. And where's Plato One now? of the He's most dead. loved characters of Walt Disney's <laughs> World of Wonder. So if Plato <laughs> reckons... That, <laughs> if Plato's a stupid joke, isn't it? If, uh, Plato, oh, reckons, really? if Plato reckons it's all right, who cares? So, uh, yeah, anyway, this fella, he was old. He was wearing a waistcoat and that, and he goes, oh, well, you know, what would you like to eat? I goes, uh, well, you know, I'm vegetarian. Oh, vegetarian? And I goes, yes, can I have some vegetarian food? He goes, well, I'm not sure... We've got anything. Um, what do you usually eat? And I went, whatever I like. That's, what <laughs> oh, that's terrible, God. isn't it? Whatever yeah. I like. <laughs> Stone monuments, ivies, <laughs> Pinocchio hats. I was really exhausted. It was a very difficult time for me that day down in Champneys. I was under a lot of pressure and I ended up pooing in a jacuzzi later on in the day, <laughs> truth know. be known. I know. It's difficult. Anyway, that man goes, if you want, my mic keeps going in and out. What's going on? Right. Um, like it goes, uh, it's not really. Uh, it goes, um, he goes, Do you want to have, uh, like, he goes, If you want, I could get you my dinner. I said, This little old man, I goes, Yeah, thanks. I love that bit. <laughs> did you really? Yeah, and what how was did you dinner? feel? Sated after the, <laughs> <laughs> I ate that dinner right up nice and tight. And you, you didn't feel about him anything bad? He but... liked me, that man. We got on really well. He told me that he'd like been at a hotel before and Frank Sinatra had come and stayed. And he said that, that frankly, was... he was less trouble. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, so, like, hang on, what was the dinner? Uh, it was some pasta with uh, parmesan on it, sort of like tortellini, but a vegetarian version of it. And like, well, he came over to see if it was all right. I remember, I'm, look, I'm, remember he I'm, he I'm came saying, over hoping that you might offer him a bite. <laughs> he came over and goes, is that oh, all right? Man. Is that all right, sir? And like, but by I now, I was on the phone probably trying to get someone fired, I think. <laughs> and I go, go like, eating pasta. He goes, is, it, is, is, is that all right, sir? And I'm like, hmm, yeah, I'm fine, fine. Mm, uh, Michael winnering it down my throat. And listen, you know, none of us is perfect. And the fact that I own up to these things means I'm a well-rounded, vulnerable, man yeah. and uh, I mean, like you're, you're you know a little bit schizophrenic that's all i've had trouble with mental illness all of my life trevor and i'm yeah. glad that you see fit to ridicule that fact <laughs> so um right hold on let's have a look at some of the text messages these cans keep going in now adam it's enough worrying oh so we talk to the people talk right. to the people right let's talk to the people right what we do right the people printed that story about me earlier saying that i'd had it off with that girl who i had had it off with but they made it sound like i weren't very good at sex now that's unforgivable isn't it <laughs> <laughs> when we all know that i'm at best i'm good at sex i've been practicing it for so long. Right, let's have a talk to the people now. Because, you know, they print at the bottom of the page, oh, if you've got a story on someone, ring this number. We're just ringing that number now. We should go through to it any second, then we'll talk to the people. Hello? Hello? Ian? What seems to be the trouble? Oh, How blimey. do you know the name? Right, I'm talking to Ian. <laughs> Ian is the engineer here. He's standing baffled in a room, just floundering around. It's, and we're watching him through a glass. It's like watching a, a, a lobster slowly asphyxiate in a fish tank. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, OK, well, what we'll do is we'll do that in the next link. Perhaps while the record's on, we'll do, we'll, we'll do, some, we'll do some technical tests. OK, we've got some emails and stuff here. Uh, OK. Maybe next week have Luke in for half hour and get the listeners to challenge Luke. I'm sure it's what people want, says Aaron. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> the body is not a plate, it's a platter of its own, a veritable buffet. Besides, we all know that men can't multitask and who will be left to clean up the mess is Sarah. That's a good point. Buffet. That's a good can, reason. Yeah, can I just say that buffet. it's oh, buffet. Buffet. Yeah. Buffet. Not buffet. Buffet. <laughs> a buffet. <laughs> We're having a buffet. <laughs> buffet. <laughs> I had a buffet earlier. I really enjoyed a buffet. Trev should spend a minute talking about when you put an ice cube in a tepid drink and the ice cracks. Phil Paget, You can come, Phil, for that if you want. That's good, isn't it? I'll Is bet, he around? I bet Phil's not around. Where You've got to be at the Edinburgh Festival to enter this competition, otherwise you can't come to the show at four o'clock this afternoon. Four o'clock this afternoon, Gilded Balloon, Balloon, Balloon Wine Bar. Come to it. Um, How much does it cost to come? I don't know what the tickets are. It's what do you reckon? Eight quid? Yeah. 
<laughs> you're joking, are you? How much does it cost to come and see you? Come and see you? I don't know, Trevor, but what you'll get is a, cra- a well-crafted, experienced stand-up comedian trying his best to entertain an audience, not a man having a mental breakdown and weeing in his boxer shorts. Which Speak- is which? <laughs> <laughs> speaking of Cornwall, in a place called Treasure Park in Cornwall... Look, someone doing your style of links here, Matt. Oh, speaking of Cornwall... And speaking we were. <laughs> speaking of Cornwall, in a place called Treasure Park in Cornwall, they have an actual car from Back to the Future on display. Did you go there? Matt, are we too busy looking was, at witches? To be honest, I was looking at... What, what are all these weird, weird noises? noises going that from is head. an eerie, spooky, is eerie. magical bit of Merlin that Cornwall. music. That's what happens in Cornwall. That Cornwall, sort of noise, vibration. I was Edinburgh's looking at old ghosts. things, not really back to the future things, which is sort of future old. Future old. I think everything will be old one day, Matt. Even you should remember that when you're laughing at that I'm old man old in the now. restaurant. I'm 29 now. Talk about manually... Oh, crikey. I'm <laughs> just like, Trevor, this is a suggestion for you. Well, actually, it's actually nothing wrong with this sentence. Talk about manually masturbating animals for artificial insemination for one minute, says Mark von Marvin III, Earl of Essex, who I think is not a real <laughs> Earl. OK, well, like Mark, if you're that. in the Edinburgh area and genuinely would like to win these tickets, I'll, Matt, I'll do that. Trevor will be prepared to talk about that for yeah. one what minute. What about that? Um, I read about that once. This man had to do that for monkeys. and uh, one What, of what, some... what? A man has to do what, what for monkeys? Like that? <laughs> what, what, what? Because he said something surprising. I know, this man did that for monkeys, you know. He that, um, artificially... He worked in a monkey. zoo and he had to masturbate the monkeys. Masturbate sorry. a monkey. <laughs> sorry, mum. Sorry, mum. So your mum is disappointed yeah, in your yeah, threesomes. Up, you the one about effing about with a monkey stinkle. It was stinkle. a long time ago, I was that single, I don't make care. make proud. You're saving a species, at least. That but way. anyway... What, the pretty species of monkey? Yeah. I didn't do this to a monkey. This man did. He, Don't try and get out of it now. You've admitted monkey, to I... your mother that you once touched up a monkey no, till it, it, it issued stuff out of its monkey There was part. a man I read who did that job in a zoo and some of the monkeys... What were you doing it, while you were reading listen, it? You'll like touching this. yourself you'll up like your this. bottom. You'll like this. You disgust me. <laughs> I love you. Shut up for a minute. Go on then. Oh, some of the monkeys afterwards, he had to cuddle them because the monkeys wanted to cuddle afterwards. <laughs> oh, it's so like the monkey it's after true, ejaculated. Yeah. They're like the opposite of you. A man who kicks the door open immediately a free some ends and gets on his way home. Terrible. Don't think I might need a little cuddle sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking, oh, me and Matt are heterosexuals. It's a long just time ago. Around. Long time ago, we're all single. News! A lot of things have happened lately on this lovely planet of ours. I don't like this show ours. anymore. I'm going home. Why are you going home? That's the news, mate. I've quit. <laughs> <laughs> that would be some news we could all enjoy. Trevor's effing around. Trevor, this is actually a radio show we're doing. What are you doing on your phone? Texting a listener. Why? Because they're annoying me. Trevor, you can communicate with the listeners through the microphone. We're doing a radio program. Why are you texting them? them? I don't want to encourage them. We can't individually text everyone that listens to this show. Perhaps we can. Perhaps listeners are dropping off in such great numbers that we can just pop round their houses and have one of our bon homie-ridden, inconsequential natterings within their front room. Matt, why are you caressing your forehead as if you've just had the worst news I've had a headache for about three, four days. Well, you deserve them the way you lived in the past, all them threesomes. What's your mum going to think? Why do you bring these? Things up. Um, yeah, I'm here with Matt Morgan. You right, mate? Yes, very I'm, well. I'm here with Cocky Trevor Lockie. Got a headache, though. Oh, you've got a headache. Don't, when people say, oh, you're right, Matt, don't, for God's it's sake, tell them how you are. Otherwise, you'd have to list your moral inventory that includes numerous threesomes. Trevor, how are you, dear? What's the matter? I can't say anything that, can I? Oh. Just, just let me listen. Oh! See? So I think See? we all know that the real answer is Trevor's a massive pervert. How I've are you, an... Russell? I feel really, really nice today. We're doing a radio show. It's fun to play. Enjoying life at the Edinburgh Fresh Dribble, as Trevor Lott calls it. He can't talk at all. One day we'll be dead, so we better live now. That woman in the people was a bloody stupid cow. We're going to call the people now and do a prank phone call. They might be listening to this, so we'll get bugger all. Should we pull the thing through the desk? All on the mic. Should we put it through the desk? Right, OK, so we're going to... Competition winner's try... on the line. Uh, the competition winner's on the line. They're not the people. We've not even revealed the competition. Take, put the phone down to the competition winner. We don't need to talk to the competition winner now. Put it through to the people. <laughs> what a confusing man. <laughs> I'm, I'm it, a confusing man, it, it, honestly. It, it we'll started with a song. <laughs> and ended with... You know. Put the phone down on the winner of the competition. <laughs> Let them st- I don't want any winners of competitions clattering up our radio show. Get rid of them. No, because then they they're going to get them. it. We've not built up the moment, you silly sod. We've not we gone off. We just talked about it. Well, in that record, yeah, we, we said, asked we'll do the, the question. Winner. We yeah, said, but we'll do- first, the people. 
We just said. The what are you going to say? That it's better well, because you've built up. this up too I'll much. I've built it up too much. I don't care. It'll Look be good. It'll be bad. Flippant attitude. I'm not flippant. If you'd entered the competition so what if I'm flippant? and were Who told cares? recently that you'd won, we apologise for cutting you're you off. You still won. We're going to get you back in a second. When we've built it up, so it'll be an exciting moment. You watch how this is going to pan out great, Triv. I've got a good feeling about this. Okay. I really have. Okay. They already know they've won. They've had the phone put down on them, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's part of the prize. Having the phone put down on you. That's sexy. <laughs> Teases it. it. You know, does, if you're waiting. Of course it does, Trevor. Oh. If you found some when you're in love with them. Oh, I love it when they put the phone down on me. The heart never yearns for that which is easily acquired, Trevor oh, Locke. Right. The heart never yearns for that which is easily acquired. That's not true at all. Yes, oh, it is. Sh- How can it you. yearn? Sometimes you think, oh, I really want crunching up cornflakes. Yeah, but it's not yearning, isn't it? You're not yearning for that with Other your heart. Other cornflakes oh, are yeah. available and they can be just as crunchy and as nutty, but they're, you know, <laughs> they're not that particular brand. Um, so you don't yearn for a crunchy <laughs> type of cornflakes. You don't, you go, don't yearn I must for anything. Have them. You just text them. <laughs> The heart never texts for that which is easily acquired. I yearn for a lot of things, Matt. My life is defined by yearning. Yearning for unity. Yearning for peace and freedom and equality amongst all of us. Yearning for a Hollywood career. <laughs> That's going to happen. It's unstoppable. <laughs> right, so, OK, what we've got to do now, we've got to get the people on the phone. How's that going? Right, well, here, here we go then. We've been ready for it for about a month. <laughs> it's probably just some people on the phone. I think it's just... Yeah, the people. Some when people. keep saying that, going, we've got to talk to the people. The people. Keep, he doesn't understand. He's just of making address. random phone calls. <laughs> two people. Not in a Fidel Castro way, talk to the people. I've got there. Fraternity. Oh, hello. Could oh, this hello. Be? I heard a clear right, I better think of a voice. I'll talk like a woman. Hello. Yeah, hello. I could be, I'll be called Sandra. Hello? Hello? Hello. Is that the people, Trevor? I'm not talking to you. <laughs> Hello. Is that right? This, this, this prank phone call. The, the the only people that are being pranked are the listeners. Oh, that that, that is through to the people, isn't it? I just heard people in the background. Some people. P- are you people there? Answer us. What kind of newspaper doesn't address people that phone them up? Only a newspaper with something to hide. <laughs> are they are they there, Ian? Is that are we connected? This is mysterious. This is, this it's is odd, like, isn't it? It's like a, a it's like um, a, a pestering phone call in reverse. You know, you some office people... noise. You're gonna like a photocopy or something going on. Yeah, they're cowardly. The people, the people are cowardly. You said they hung up. They hung up. They hung up. We See, that's because we told it on air. We said it, so everyone who anyone who's listening would phone them up and go. You know, who work there. Oh, look, they're going to do a prank, phone, do call. A prank phone call. They would like it. It's who good reads the people, it's, anyway? It's, not many people. I don't not know what very many. It's odd that it's called the people because no people read it. Mm-hmm. It's mostly used to line rabbit hatches, I think. <laughs> I, don't know, I think they don't even read it. I I what is that background noise? I think that's Mark Sheldon down in London. Well, we can, <laughs> we can hear a crack well, anyway, it's we've got a dip set idea because it's rubbish. This is from Sebastian. <laughs> it's not really a rubbish idea, Matt. The Olympics would be rubbish if, if we let lunatics organise it. Dear brilliant Russell, amiable Matt, and that tedious, unstable, despicable, eager maniac, ma- malformed chimera of a being known simply as Trevor Locke. I think Matt and Trevor should have a war. I support Matt in the war. Everyone must declare their allegiance. Also, eat your fudge, Trevor, says Sebastian in Manchester. Eat your fudge, Trevor. Have you had any fudge today? We're up in Scotland. What have you been doing? I haven't had any fudge. Eat since some I've been haggis. Up. I'd like some haggis. Go and eat a haggis. Eat I'd some like... shortbread and some fudge. I'd like some... Uh, sh- all of that. I'd like it. Why is your, bl- your blood sugar levels, Trev? I'm uh, terrified yeah, that they're very the low. Place. They're all over. What Why has been that? going on about this? Well, like, they're unstable. I, I should have had some blood tests done on You here. should have had some fudge! Blood eat some tests. fudge, Trev! No, no. Is this a knock-on effect of fudge? Eat some fudge, you see! I'm hypoglycemic. You I'll... bloody see! Eat some fudge! I went to the doctor, he said have some blood tests. Is this what we're going to have to put up with? I went to the doctor, I'm hypoglycemic. Is this what your show's going to be like at the Gilded Balloon at four o'clock at the Gilded Balloon wine bar? No, it's all fantasy, that is. It's, it's going to be brilliant now, I'm looking forward to it. Good. It'll be yeah, excellent. Good. What, could you go into shock or anything? Could I go into shock? I'd yeah. go into shock if he said something interesting. Trevor, you're not got. You're always claiming to be on the precipice of some disorder. Oh, I think I might be diabetic. Oh, I think I might be hypoglycemic. That's the doctors I tell I might me have the, the doctors. Who yeah. are these doctors? Well, doctors. It's like having Jackie Onassis on the show. Who are all these medics that are pouring over your every move and every body part? Come on, part? Russell, you're in dangerous territory there. I'm Why? About medics pouring over you. Yeah. Why? What have I done? Who's down Arley Street? I'm <laughs> chucking money at any idea that's come along. <laughs> Really? Lasers, you say, on the inside of a man's bum? <laughs> Fire away, boys! Right, OK, well, let's listen to a track now and get ourselves together, for Christ's sake. Why don't you read out an email, Trevor? I lost my virginity once. <laughs> you can only lose it once. How yeah. many holes has this person's body got? I don't know. 
feel like having it off with Swiss cheese. Uh, tell the papers... Well, we can't do that anymore. Um, we can't do that because that's all falling apart. Tell the papers Trev and Matt are together. That's surely more believable than Trevor having sex with an actual woman. Hey, that pic- picture that picture of us, uh, ca- of you two carrying me out of my house, was published in a newspaper. Which was one? It? Or somewhere. I don't know where it was, but someone told me they'd seen it. OK. We, we, me, we was like, the photographers went outside my house, so we goes, oh, let's do something unusual. So what we did was, like, Matt and Trevor rolled me up like a carpet. Well, they just held me <laughs> like a rolled up carpet. I didn't need to actually be rolled up because I've not got the a qualities of, of a carpet. Skin on his back. A lot of excess skin. <laughs> and we rolled that stuff right up. He's and then just they, like a big pink sausage roll. Oh, hey, don't say that. I'm like, at one minute I'm white and pasted, next minute I'm like a sausage roll. I can't win with you guys. Then they carried me out of my house like I was a carpet under their arms. Threw and the photographer had to take a photo of that and they did and if you've seen that photo let us know 64046 enter the competition to see Cocky Trevor Lockie enter all the competitions that we've set out oh no we've got a winner haven't we for that other one yeah they were on the line but somehow we're, they yeah. got right, we'll get back we had to, to do uh, that phone call thing didn't we, we right did. now remember that competition we were on about earlier Indian Summer uh, yeah Indian Summer to go Why to that festival yeah. so shambolic will they be serving Indian food yeah, it is shampoo. No, Indian actually. summer means late. Doesn't a late, late summer. summer. It's late summer. Oh, because yeah. it's in September. Yeah, that's right. Fair enough. That's when that's when this festival will be. Anyway, we asked you that question, didn't we? About who, which ba- which Scottish band were the Reed Brothers in? The answer to that question. Oh, yes, Trevor. I know the answer. Go on, tell us it then. The Jesus and Mary chain. Th- that is the correct answer. Trevor, that was the winner. Was meant to be on but the phone. But is the is the winner there? Claire Smith from Glasgow. Hello, Claire. She's not there. See. <laughs> OK, well, let's go to a track. There's no Claire Smith from Glass. Do I get phone. to go? No. no. You, Trevor, got it right. Trevor, you are the winner. Easy. You are going to that festival. You're going to have the time of your life. Matthew, don't play with your phone, mate. Matthew. Matthew's We're on the radio. This is right. the radio show. Just let himself go, Russ. What's the matter? You can talk, both of you have always got your we're phones not on. Dur- we're not during links. We don't like during the Here's the Radio show, do stuff like that. What is that crackling? I think crackling that's the noises. listener from Glasgow communicating like a dolphin. Oh, I do apologise for this. This is Russell Brown Music Show for Six Music. Enjoy it while it lasts. And uh, on the phone now we have uh, Claire Smith from Glasgow who has won a contest. Claire, are you there, darling? I am indeed, thank you. Thank you. Claire, wow. what about that? Calls. Alexander Graham Bell <laughs> over 100 years ago invented a little machine and just today we've worked out how it's used. Uh, so, um, well done. You've won a competition. Thank you very much. <laughs> Tell us, where do you live? Um, I live in the south side of Glasgow. Of Glasgow. And, and where, where is this festival? It's in the west end of Glasgow. But and you can't d- go across the river somewhere. You can, right, OK. So you can, cr- you can cross that river. Don't you remember when you two caught me cynical going, oh, it will be a person from Glasgow, will it? Because it's easy. Yeah, exactly not- why I put no. Glasgow in my text. Well done. Ah. You flagged that up. That was but fun. I think Six Music should take you there in a golden carriage. I think you should go in a golden carriage. Claire, if you're forced to travel in anything other than a golden carriage, you've been cheated out of your rightful winnings, I think. <laughs> you're right. So, uh, have you, do you know about this Indian Summer Festival? I do indeed, yes, I. Are you excited to go? I'm very much so, I. I can't believe I didn't get tickets the first time because I'm a big fall fan for years. Oh, well, well, that was the last opportunity. It was a, a, a fall-related competition, was it? Not the fall of playing. The fall of playing at uh, Indian Summer. Are they? Yeah, you read it out about four times. I don't remember the way it meant the fall. autumn. He thought the fall, yeah, he didn't know what it meant. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was a me- I thought, oh, oh, it's in the fall, Indian summer, it's a late summer. OK, well, <laughs> jolly well done, though, uh, Claire, winning that competition. It's, uh, it's an ab- I'm, I'm happy for you. I just hope you enjoy the golden carriage. Trev, what do you want to say, well, she darling? She hasn't got the answer right yet. Did she say what it was? Yeah, oh, yeah, go on, say what it is, then. It's a formality. <laughs> It's Jesus and Mary chain. Oh, right. okay. That's what the Reed brothers were in. Yeah. The Reed brothers were in the Jesus and Mary chain. Good to check, though, Russ. Good to check. We listened to a bit of Jesus and Mary chain good just band, there. I think. All right. No one's attacking them, Matt. Uh, you know. Bobby Gillespie used to play the drums in them. Did he? Yeah, yeah. yeah, I remember seeing them playing where they played in a hole for like 20 minutes and then beat up the audience. They were great. Oh, really? Were you in the audience? Hole? Well, they're a Glaswegian band. They put, yeah, hold yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. Trevor, that's racism. Racism, why, racism why from Trevor. Because you went, like, because Claire goes, oh, they played in a hole for 20 minutes, then they beat up the audience, yeah. and Trevor <laughs> went, well, they're a Glaswegian band. As if all Glaswegian bands do. I'm not is saying all play- of them do, but it's quite common. <gasps> oh, Trevor! Trevor, why? Back away from the racism, Trev! I'm not being racist. He's being racist, isn't he, Claire? Glass- Confirm it. Yeah. Race. Totally. Racism! The Glaswegians aren't a race. I like You're being prejudiced, you're being hateful. I like, I 
I met a Glaswegian uh, Don't bus jab driver. your finger at me. Oh, you met a Glaswegian bus driver. Yeah. I'll tell you what, that gives you the right. Jeez, Black, why don't you say that the series Roots was absolute tripe or something? Do you know what I mean? You've not got the right just because you've got you've met a Glaswegian bus driver. He to was say driving everyone... a bus. He was driving a bus. What do you expect him he to do? He lost everything gambling and he had to drive a bus up and down the <laughs> Avenida Arequipa <laughs> to get his money back. It's brilliant. Well, Trevor, that does not get interesting though that may be, and it isn't. That does not give you the right to attack people of Glasgow, does it, Claire? No, it does not. I don't want to attack them. I love them. Claire, I'm glad you've won the competition. Uh, a part of your prize should be to be able to whip Trevor Locke naked through the streets of Edinburgh on his way to the Gilded Balloon Wine Bar for his ill-fated show at <laughs> four o'clock today. <laughs> come if you want. Why don't you come, Claire? Uh, I can see there's a problem. No, I wouldn't want to come either. So it's like Claire, I mean, when invited to the show. Uh, I don't know, it's, it's good things on the telly. <laughs> oh, my leg! <laughs> oh, I've been shot. I'm in Glasgow, there's gunfire everywhere. That's what you think, Trevor. That's I what you think Glasgow's that. like. I don't know anything about it. Have well, then stop there? attacking it. I've, no, I've just met a, a Glaswegian bus driver. And that gives you enough authority, does it, to attack Is that the whole you city? keep texting? Yes. <laughs> well, stop texting everyone. Both of you, right? That's it. Seen now. For years. I'm Take your texting away. about something important oh. for your birthday. <laughs> You're Next lying, year, pig. Claire, well done in the competition, my love. See you, see Thank you later. You so, um, okay, thanks. Well Take done. Bye. 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 Matthew. Right, OK, then. So, uh, what are we going to listen to now, for pity's sake? Peter, Paul and Mary. Let's listen to Peter, the Bjorn and John. <laughs> Peter, Bjorn and John. Peter, Paul and Mary should be given a bit of airtime. For I'm Christ, leaving Hold on, before on we go, plane. if you're having sex and dinner, don't forget to use a condiment. Quite good. That's quite Sean good, in London. Very good. Who's, good right? joke. Who's that? Sean. Uh, Sean in London. That's a good joke, mate. If you're having sex and dinner, don't forget to use a condiment. Good. <laughs> Really Not condom, good. condiment. Really good. good. Hi, Russell, says Amy. Did you know there's an interview with Lawrence Llewellyn Bowen saying his wife fancies you and you're like the illegitimate child they never had? She fancies her own child? What's going on <laughs> in the Llewellyn Bowen family? <laughs> Blimey, I'm flattered, but also someone contact social services. I think there are places in Japan, says Mark in Hornchurch, where you can eat and drink while there's a young lady under the table That's true, doing actually. stuff from you can, Mark in Hornchurch. You eat your dinner off the woman. I'd like that. You wouldn't. It's horrible. In unhygienic. unhygienic. Yeah. And also their backs aren't very flat. Things fall off. Their backs aren't flat. Have you tried right. this, Trevor? Try and put a mug Where down are those on Italian a girls? Japanese lady's shoulder. I will not try and do that. You hateful man. Slur. <laughs> it is another racial slur. What are you saying? They're probably kamikaze. You flip the mug onto the floor. I'm saying everyone's different, and the differences should be celebrated. Oh, celebrate with your cruel jibes, with your cruel, hateful chants on the terraces, Trevor Hillock. <laughs> no surrender, cocky locky. What's wrong with you, Trevor? Don't be silly. Don't don't lump me in with that lot. No, no come sorry, on. Trevor. I love you. Roll on. Right, OK, then. Uh, Trevor, I just wanted to attack you for not eating enough fudge. Uh, yeah, well, if you, say... Somebody bought me some fudge, Russ. Stand in there with your hands on your hips like little Lord Fauntleroy. Where's my fudge? Just... That's my little chance to you. Where's my fudge? Eat your fudge, Trev! Where's my fudge? Eat, Eat it! Where is What's it? What's his challenge for today? Trevor, your challenge for today is to stretch your undercarriage so tight that I can see my reflection in it. And that'll be the best it's ever looked. <laughs> This is Russell Brand on Six Musical. Me and Matt Morgan and Trevor Locke and some other people have joined us, the competition winners. Now, have you ever, Trevor, don't you dare do a single clap like that. You're not Jesus. So, um, yeah. guess what, right? Have you ever... Uh, were we just listening to The Strokes and Pearl Jam simultaneously then? No, it's uh, just like Pearl Jam. Text, text us 64046. Let us know what you were listening to then. God help us if we know. It's chaos in here. <laughs> so, um, right. So, we're going to do Trevor's Sonic Enigma. The competition winners from last week, Paul and Mark. Here, round of applause for Paul and Mark, everyone. Yeah, yeah let's do it. Let's they're clapping themselves. Fair enough. They won a competition, Trevor. If they want to clap themselves, let them clap, oh. I say. Paul, Mark, who was it that actually got it right? It was you, was it, Paul? Uh, come nearer to the mic, darling. Pretend you're in the Beatles, uh, but just try and get on with each other. Now, Paul, so uh, how did you... Uh, right, what was the Sonic Enigma last week? It was uh, the Strokes, wasn't it? Juice it was. Juice, juice Box. box yeah. Juice Box. Stop kicking that mic stand, darling, because that goes Sorry. out on the air. God, I don't know. What's wrong with these lads? We let them in the studio. Craning, keep your heads within eight inches of that thing. Just imagine it's each other's erect winkles, <laughs> and, um, and you have to greedily feed upon it. Oh, You'd have to stay serious. relatively close. Oh, so dear. what? Who cares? For God's sake, we're all going to be dead soon. So what was it? It was Juice Box by The Strokes. Yeah. And what was the clue again? Just describe it for us a bit if you can, no, it Paul. It was quite straightforward, actually, I thought, um, it was... compared to most. Wasn't it? Yeah, definitely, yeah. So it was the it sound was of the juicer, revolting, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Wasn't it the typical sound of Trevor committing a sex act alone no, in a room? No! Is it was it? What was it? Bit, it was confusing. It was confusing and disorientating and difficult. Mark, and you're here as Paul's mate, are you? Brother. Brother? Yeah. You two are brothers? Yeah, oh, yeah. it's nice that you get on still. Did you get on when you were children? No. 
No, right. I'm only child, so I don't know what it's like to have brothers or sisters. That's why I've also developed a personality where I only think the world exists from my perspective. That's called solipsism. Trevor, that is... You're being uh, very uh, selfish. Uh, <laughs> uh, this uh, this um, Sonic Enigma thing of yours... Yes, it's very tricky, isn't it? It really is enigmatic, I mean, I'd what say. what a name. It really sums up the whole competition. Sums it up. We've stopped calling it Trevor Dunn Noise, mate. Have you noticed that? Of course. Oh, yeah. yeah we used to call it Trevor Dunn Noise, didn't we? It's just the cycle that, of life. Though. Things drop off. Things drop off. That's one of your new satanic philosophies, is That's it? That's right, yeah. <laughs> Drop Matt believes in Satanism now. He's he become a Satanist. Yeah, I said it was interesting. You said well, I'm now a Satanist. You've come out as a Satanist. What's have interesting I? about it? You've come out it's as a Satanist. He goes, so Satanism, paganism, a cult, not a cultism particularly, but sort of you know. He said we should all do a Ouija board on the show and I did tamper not with say forces that, that we said, can't possibly understand. I said we shouldn't do that. Well, right. I did a Ouija board with Marcus Turland in a lunch hour once. Oh god! And just just at a critical moment, his dad fell out of bed. And there was a big bump on the ceiling. <laughs> was his dad a ghost, Trip? Why does every one of Trevor Lock's stories involve a boot coming through a ceiling or someone falling onto a ceiling? Or Why? a plumber fell out of a ceiling. A plumber came through a ceiling, a boot came through a it's ceiling. It's because he lies, but he's only got a very small imagination. His imagination is the size of a tiny thimble, Mate, and all that's in there is a ceiling <laughs> and a boot. <laughs> so, but he wants to lie an awful lot. <laughs> so every single lie, he's just got two component parts. Oh, one day, I was walking down the road and I bumped into a couple of ceilings. One of the ceilings booted the other ceiling right in its ceiling shin. Trevor... I'll say this to you. One man's ceiling is another man's floor. Oh, cocky Trevor Lockie. And your floor is that all your anecdotes have got ceilings Ooh, in them. Not true. What about yes, all the ones? Is. And there is a ceiling, a very low ceiling for your anecdotes, about what? six yes. inches high, and underneath it is just a boot and a 19 anecdotes kicking around trying to be original. There's no, one no, anecdote about a boot. There's one about a boot. Oh, I was There's at university a and a boot came through a ceiling. Yeah, that, was an hour. that story was the that? longest, most boring it went on thing. For an People are still talking about it, oh, Russ. People yeah, are. Yeah, they're trying to work People out what it means. People are talking about being abused as children, There's Trevor. a thread. It's not a tribute. There's a but... thread on the message board about the boot. Yeah, there's a, really? Yeah. Really, Trevor? Yeah. Well, instead it's... of using... When you're on that internet, it's nice to see you using the internet for something other than grooming. As I don't go on it. I just get told about it by people. OK, dear. Let's do your Sonic Enigma, don't shall we? Don't call me dear like that. <laughs> do this at, right, Why so... have you been calling men darling and dear today? Well, he's become gone, theatrical. I've got camp and I'm in Edinburgh. There's a fringe festival on. <laughs> I'm remembering <laughs> the actually roots. I've been getting off with fellas and all. I haven't. Um, <laughs> not that there's anything wrong with that. So, listen, let's... Um, Sonic Enigma. Have you made an, an irritating jingle for for it, Trev? Yes, I have. Right, it's okay. very irritating. Let's yes. have a listen to it. You it's like it. Enigma. Yeah, it's tricky. It's quite good, <laughs> You're like Bjork. I am a little bit like her. He's a dork. He's a jerk. He's a twerp. God, it's going on too long. It's already too long, Trev. You've got no Ooh. concentration Can I stop span. stop it? No, stop it. Limited concentration. Stop span. it. It's Stop good. it, Matt. It's it gets good. Oh. I mean, it gets good. It gets good. How long does it take to get good? It's still going. All right, well, the ending's all right. But I mean, it's because it's the end into that, and then you just get bored after about five seconds. It's boring. Seconds. But why Hold do you on. do it? Why do you do why these do jingles? Do Value added. I'm trying to do a radio show. I'm trying to take my job professionally, Russell. <laughs> well, and that's the result, is it? Yes, I thought well, that had very high production values. Well, take it, an holiday, for God's sake. If that a, is you trying your hardest to be professional. at the beginning, then I did awful. all that high stuff. You likened it to Bjork. What more do you want for a jingle? All right. Essentially, <laughs> it's throwaway. It's nice. Let's listen to the actual enigma itself now, shall we? Oh, God, here we go. Oh, Always that noise. Odd. Oh, here comes Bonnie Tyler, Hercules and Superman. Selective like heroes. Is that it? That's it, mate. I don't know what that you're waiting it. for. Don't know what, what you're I'm waiting, waiting for. for is the normal five or six minutes that your bloody enigma typically I'll consists of. I keep you on your toes, don't I? Never get complacent. Never think you can predict the enigma. Never Don't think. try and predict it. That's the nature of an enigma. It can never be predicted. Trevor, that enigma is not an actual thing. If you... Let's hear it again because it's actually quite succinct. The usual noise of Trevor. Oh, here comes Bonnie Tyler, Hercules and Superman. <laughs> you are an idiot, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> OK, so if you think you know the answer to that, text us on 64046 or you can email us. Also, email us about sex or dinners or both, as a lot of people are. Also, email us if you want to come to Trevor Locke's show at uh, the Gilded Bloom Wine Bar, 4 o'clock today at the Edinburgh Festival. Should be a right laugh. OK, let's have a quick listen to the Paddingtons. Later on, we're going to be talking to Jen Brister. She's a comedian here and our mate at this festival. And also, we'll talk more to Paul and Mark about squabbling as children. Talking of 
squabbling brothers. Yeah, let's do this thing how Matt Morgan will do it. Talking of squabbling brothers like Paul and Mark are, we're going to be talking to one of the original squabbly brothers. <laughs> That's right, it's Mr Noel Gallagher will be on the show talking about that as we were. And Matt will be doing one of his cultural review in between sending a frantic text trying to deny his actual <laughs> self to a woman he used to go out with. We've got an email here from Darren in Manchester. Trevor could speak about a cartoon character that he has once had a crush on. Have you ever had a crush on cartoon characters, Trev? Uh, I don't think so, but I don't who, know. Who do you have crushes on? Wilma uh, Flintstone. Wilma Flintstone. We all fancied Everyone Wilma fancy a little her. bit. Did Obviously, you, yeah. Jessica Rabbit. Jessica Rabbit, Jessica sexy. Rabbit yeah, Rabbit that Rabbit. affected me quite profoundly. I wanted to make her flesh. Make uh. her. What do you mean? Well, you wanted to go to the butchers and try and build her. Yeah, or a graveyard. I weren't bothered which. <laughs> you know, as, as long as I had a flesh puppet to call my own. Isn't that natural? Ain't that what every boy wants after they've seen Roger Rabbit? You used to say I had a personality like Roger Rabbit. Do you no, remember that? Didn't I say you were like the evil man who dies at the end? Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, it was all great times. Russell, says some fella, Alan, he's called. Russell, I've never had sex. Can you find me someone? Says Alan in Wigan. Oh, well, I don't know if I can. I'm not really a pimp. But, like, what you must do is just be nice to people and then ask ever so nicely. And uh, I'm sure they'll be happy to have sex with you. I like that Alan's not specified. Agenda or anything. Well, Can you find me someone? Open, yeah, yeah, keep yeah. your options open. Who cares, Alan? Have sex with anyone, it'd be a laugh. But do use a condiment to reprise <laughs> a joke from earlier there. Lovely little gag. My friend used to work in a sexual disease. Trevor, is Shut this up. a lie? No, it's well, true. Did, so, did this, at any point in this story, a boot a comes ceiling. through a ceiling? No, th that Tell me the story. The boot only comes through a ceiling once in one story. Yeah, and then a, a boot... plumber came through no, a it's ceiling. The ceiling. The ceiling is There's the key no thing. no ceilings involved in this. Well, so this was an right, open air sex. This was an open, open air with no ceilings. She used to do it at Fates Church You liar. No, it, there was a, there was a, clearly a ceiling. Right, there it goes, a ceiling. Does this story lead anywhere? Look, Trevor, come well, on, tell I'm us what just happened. just saying that she was a sexual diseases woman and she worked once in the... <laughs> sexual diseases she woman? She was a doctor she was a, she was a lady. If you say she was a sexual diseases woman, people just assume she was ill. She was an STD um, nurse. nurse. Doctor. doctor. They don't have special they nurses. And uh, a man came in and man came, came in. man came in called Trevor. What was the name of this mysterious <laughs> man? A man His came in. How did you apart. see this? And he presented her with a particular issue. What was this particular issue, oh, Trevor? I don't know what it was, but the Seems point to was know a lot about it, it, Trev. He got it from sheep and cows. And it turned out it was quite common where he came from in the, this particular part of England. You racist pig. Where he had it off with pigs as well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you disgust me, and, and you're all yeah. right now. Yeah, and he was... And he, you know, <laughs> Just keep taking the tablets, Trev, is what I'd There's recommend. No tablets involved, and obviously I wasn't involved. We all know that that's not the sort of thing I do. That's why he does it, because there's no tablets needed, unlike uh, all his other sexual conquests. All his other <laughs> filthy little antics. You take them, and there's no ceiling anywhere in this anecdote. Well, well done, Trev. Thank Get you for that, Trevor. Whole boring story about mentioning ceilings. Some, mm, I'd like to talk about sexual dinners, oh, says someone. Again. Fine. <laughs> what, again. That's it? That's all they've said? Yeah, they'll get their chance. Trevor Stanton, <laughs> composition. Look at their day in court. <laughs> this is from Josh Vince. Trev should do a puppetry of the penis style one minute show using Russell's dinkle. Oh. <laughs> uh, ideas include, says Josh Vince, a half eaten vanilla flavoured mini milk lolly. <laughs> that's nice. Uh, that's, my will is in lovely shape, Josh. A half eaten vanilla flavoured mini milk lolly. <laughs> I love them mini milk lollies. They Very are good. They were funny. Why are you. Are you what? Are you for real? Uh, yeah. yeah, I love those mini milk lollies. Uh, and they were funny, man. Oh, man, those mini milks. What the hell are you talking I about? I liked mini milks. He's actually crying, remembering it. <laughs> <laughs> He's got tears in his eyes. <laughs> well, probably had I like the words as well, mini milk. Yeah, what, yeah. what were they, the so Imagine things? being angry and wanting to... Yeah, them ones, they come in a little paper sock and you take it yeah. off. <laughs> And then you've got your mini milk. You Remember, you could blow it up and the bag could, would the come bag off. would pop. Yeah, and you go. What if you're angry and you want a mini milk? You go. I want a mini milk. I want a mini milk. And you, but you have to say mini milk. That's like that Brilliant. argument I had about go on, um, croissant. Go once. on. Yeah, you did have an argument with someone. How did it go? It was he put his meat above. You know when you put. Uh... <laughs> Bloody hell! You two. <laughs> this better not end up in Trev's STD clinic. He put his chicken at the top of the fridge. Yeah. You know, that, you, you, still you, sounds you, like you, a euphemism. You know, come on. He man. put his chicken top of my fridge. Four <laughs> nine months later, I had an egg hatch. <laughs> Say an egg. I put the ointment on. It's cleared up now. Oh dear. Come on. So you, you know, yeah, he not, put his chicken on top of your uh, fridge. Raw um, poultry in a fridge at the top because the blood might drip onto other things. And, and he drips onto my croissant. <laughs> right. It drips onto my croissant. I have an argument with him with the word. 
when I was using the pr- correct French pronunciation, croissant. <laughs> no, it's dripping onto my croissant. <laughs> I kept having to say. Your blood's all over my croissant. I'll carve you up. No mug my no, croissant. None of it's gone in your croissant. <laughs> oh, it's gone in my croissant. Oh, Can I annoying. just say you shouldn't be keeping a croissant in the fridge? Why don't you refrigerate a croissant? Exactly. There was a there were a twelve pack. Oh, that's oh, disgusting. You're a joke. You buy croissant in you a 12 pack. You used to, I was an animal. And you have no right to pronounce student. it in the French accent. If it's, if it's in, a in a 12 pack, pack it's Trevor. a croissant, and it's... Ooh. It's not a croissant. <laughs> doesn't have a racist <laughs> I mean, slur. Disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> it just sounds like you're attacking the French, Trev. Why not? I'm on your endless diatribe of hate. I'm defending the French. Don't you jab that finger at me, Enoch, pal. Look, I'm defending them. He's just taken one of their staples, and he's ruined it by putting it in a 12 pack in a fridge. Well, it's... Girl, Someone drip drip chicken blood on it, which is almost let voodoo. Them, mate. Let them, that's better. I Trevor, mean, are you not happy with this anecdote? Because at no all. point did a boot come from a ceiling and crush the croissant. Please, well, does that you satisfy oh, you? How, when are you going to get tired of it? Eat your fudge, Trev! Where is my fudge, Russ? We'll get some later. Where's my fudge? Right, also, uh, in the suggestion by Josh Vince, in this puppetry of the penis that you could do with my dinkle is a, an albino <laughs> hiding from the police behind a tree. <laughs> I quite like his suggestion. It's Josh Vince is funny. He, he should keep... You Josh Vince, you're funny, in. mate. You should accompany this tiny show with a short p- musical piece by those two children who painted his leg black. Oh, remember when Trev had his legs painted black? Yeah, that was funny. That? Yeah. Continue this. Josh, I've not got a small dinkle, and you're mad to suggest that I have. Darren Apana, what a nice name, says, when we send something my ship, it, on my ship, it's called a Can cargo. Can you read properly, yeah, please? Not really. When we send something on a ship, it's called cargo. When we send something in a car, it's called a shipment. For one minute, Trevor could explain why this is in his stand-up show. I'd love to see him perform in Darren oh, in Manchester. I'll do that. That's I'll interesting. Do that. He's in Manchester, though, so he won't win tickets. Come! I'll do that anyway. What, uh, what about Trevor last night when he goes, oh, I'm playing at the Bongo Rooms. What an idiot. And he was actually playing this at the, the Roxy. Bon- How could you... He goes, we're going playing at the Bongo Rooms. We go to the Bongo Rooms knowing that the best we're going to get is 20 minutes of torturous tripe from Trevor Lock. In even playing at the bongo rooms playing at a place called the roxy there's no there is no assonance there's no similarity between the sound roxy and the word bongo rooms what's wrong with you trevor Maybe. it's like saying oh oh should we go and see judy garland play or oh, so I'm, I'm in public enemy why do you make these mistakes trevor <laughs> maybe i wanted to throw you off my trail maybe you i wanted did to do my well, comedy on my own a quiet little... trevor yeah. if you'd not had us there there wouldn't have been an audience at that That's gig true. and That's i certainly true. wouldn't have appreciated you as much as we did humoring you like an old man eating soup Hello, boys. I Hold often on. like to enjoy my dinner with a bit of sex. Oh, oh God, we've had that. Right, OK, so listen. Um, right, lads, now yeah. come on. Mm, we've all what? had a laugh, haven't yes, we? Yes, we It's going well. Trevor. Bam. Why is no one entering Trevor's competition? Why aren't they? What, what's happened to the... Why are you used to not reading out text <laughs> messages and emails? Matthew, read Here's out one. text messages and emails. Hi, Russ, I think you're a delicious licorice stick. Love you, love you, <laughs> fungo. I said well, read out good an reason. email, <laughs> not express your actual feelings <laughs> for me. <laughs> I'm just shy. This silly, is a silly boy. crayon in my hand. <laughs> Ridiculous business. Trevor, read an email. Right, you're in The Independent on Sunday, described as a synthetic rebel, says Neil from Kilburn. Synthetic rebel? Yeah. Blimey. Mm-hmm. Well, how synthetically rebellious is this? <clears throat> Not really. I am a synthetic rebel. <laughs> but, well, uh, well, you know, I'd rebel against things that are worth rebelling against. Why? Only the other day there was a... Oh, right, probably because of the podcast that was pulled because when we talked about Addy not being allowed into that club Movida because he was oh, disabled. Why synthetic? Why synthetic? That was a genuine rebellion, wasn't it? About Addy not being allowed into that club Movida because he was disabled and Don't attacked do by it. the doorman. Don't do it again. I don't think that's very synthetic do that or rebellious. You're going to stop this podcast. Oh no, we just won't put that bit in the podcast. Oh really? What a sensible oh, thank solution! You. Thank what you. We've done it once. Right, it's got to go in the podcast. No. About Mod of Movida. Please, I had a lovely because he's in a wheelchair. I had a lovely week away in Cornwall without all this. No, you didn't. You did. missed me. I didn't. Did you not miss me when you was in Cornwall? No, not really. Later we've got Matt's Culture Review. Later we've got Trevor Cockle. Oh, actually, we better do some of these things. Let's listen to the track, then we'll talk to and Jen enter Bristol. Enter the, the Sonic Enigma, by the way. Enter the Sonic Enigma. For they, God's sake, if they get that. I don't know. They come they to the Reading Festival. Come to the Radio Show at Reading. Yeah, Free tickets to the Reading Festival. because we'll have to get them a pass. To I don't know how it works, but you'll get to come to the Reading Festival anyway. If you can climb that. a fence and answer a competition. <laughs> 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 you could be in with the treat of a lifetime <laughs> if you don't mind being pursued by angry dogs. This is Six Music. 
Okay, let's welcome our guest to the show first, Jen Brewster. Welcome, welcome to the show, Jen Brewster. Hooray, away, away. So welcome to you, welcome. It's exciting, isn't it? Incredible. Let's welcome our other guest, Tamsin Shirt. Welcome, welcome, Tamsin. Thank you very welcome. Much. Thank you very much. Right now, okay, both of these women are uh, at, performing at the Fringe Festival in different capacities. Jen, let's have a bit of a chat with you first, dear. What yes. are you doing here at the Fringe Festival? I'm doing a one woman show at the Pleasance Courtyard at the Hut at 8 pm. At the Hut? Yes. At, right, okay. It's you said the, the details. Hut. Yeah, the Hut. It is are exactly the pizza shops? are available. Ah, well done, Trevor. Yeah, Good. Undue <laughs> prominence. He deals with problems like that very efficiently. So, okay, so the, you're performing mm. one woman show. What is it? Stand up comedy? It's, it is stand up comedy, but it has a theme to it. Oh, a theme, you say? Yes, it does. It's the what theme of um, mother daughter relationships. Okay, so, anyone who is a daughter or a mother? Yeah, but I mean, you know, if you've got a mum, it doesn't matter. You're right. Oh, because you won't go. To you won't go. I'm not a daughter. Son. This means nothing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Although I have to say, my target audience has that like, been middle aged women. <laughs> <laughs> middle-aged women have come. That's good, isn't show. it? No, it's wonderful. They're all nice welcome. to have middle-aged women. Okay, and how's it going? Are you enjoying it? Um, mm, what, what's the problem? It's, well, no, it's, um, it's not that I'm not enjoying it. It's just that I'm not... Come on, dear, what's the problem? You're extremely whinging about I'm how and lonely you are. What's wrong with Edinburgh? Don't you like the Edinburgh voice. Festival? I love the Edinburgh Festival. It's, are you not having a nice time here? No, it's not that I'm not having a nice time. I'm just a little tired. You're tired. It's that, I think it's the, that midway through the festival, a little bit jaded. Is it, um, you, get, you get jaded midway through a festival. I don't. I like the middle bit. That's the I liked. You've just got here, though. You've only just <laughs> arrived, Russell, with an entourage <laughs> of like a million people. Hang on a minute. I'm on my own flyering for four oh, hours a day. Oh, no, that That's can't be nice. I have to work it. I, I had to do that when I first out. came to this festival. I had to do it in my own five. Did you? No, you I hired didn't. children to do it. <laughs> <laughs> but that was you could hire children to I've do it. I've actually got a helper. These I've, were good, I've those children. To get a helper. Who's your helper? Uh, her name's Tracy. She's, How old is she? she I Trevor, know. stop trying to have sex with people's helpers. <laughs> no, I'm just What's you wrong you with you? Like you might like her, Trevor. She's and if they lesbian. were a child? She's a lesbian. Oh, of course I like her. You'd like her, definitely. Another doomed romance for you. When the, what I did, innovatively, is I got three children that lived opposite the venue I was at and got them to do flying for me, but as it turned out, those children were quite naughty. Matthew, concentrate I'm on what we're doing. My this is the show. Well, this is the show. Why are you going to do when you're not doing something else? Well, Silly, participate in the I'm radio program. I'm listening to everything. It's actually happening now. This is the radio I'm show. I'm listening. Okay, like, you know, there's not going to be another point with it. This is it. This is life. So, um, okay, Jen. No, I would, I would have got, I would have got children to help me uh, opposite the the venue I'm in. But unfortunately, opposite the venue I'm in are uh, the Portaloos, so that's about there it. There could be children there. Don't <laughs> don't there could rule be that out. In there. There have could a look. Be, yeah. Also, though, the thing is, uh, you know, go steady on that because those children that helped me did end up being quite naughty. They did come into, the, they spat at people in the queue. <laughs> uh, they <laughs> came yeah. into the venue, stole condoms, and gave them to me as a gift, which I was actually fat. What? By. They came into well, the venue where the, the, the office of the Gilded Balloon, where we were performing at that time. They're only little lads, and they, like one of them was a girl about that big, uh, three foot tall. I don't know how old that is. <laughs> <laughs> That's very young. Children at all. Sounds about six years old to me. So one of them was definitely about six. Then there's another one, Frankie. He was a lovely lad. And right, and they, they were, well, but they were naughty children, and they kept setting fire to things and stuff. It was good promotion for a while. People were coming <laughs> to the show, but then the social services eventually came. It was, it was very difficult, and they stole condoms from the venue. And go, oh, Russell, we stole you these condoms. They were quite worldly wise for well, children. You got something out of it then? Oh well, yeah. Why well, yeah. did they know that you needed condoms? <laughs> Don't uh, just do you think they were worried kids. about you your, <laughs> your habits? <laughs> no. Oh, I'm worried about Russell. I think he's not using condoms. <laughs> no, I've been properly. Yeah, yeah so I don't know. They'd picked up something from somewhere. But that's probably why they need one. No, no, let's oh, leave that. God. Blimey. Whoa, easy, steady. I wonder how steady. old they are now, Russ. Do you think they'll, they'll be about... Eight. I'd love to find those kids. <laughs> yeah, if you're listening to this show... And should, were, one call was called in. Frankie. Call in, Frankie. He won't be listening to this, are <laughs> he? He's probably inside by now. They were naughty. If you still need a job, Jen Brister. I need a flyer. Needs a flyer. In fact, anybody that wants to fly for me, please call in and... Uh, I'll you can't call. use this to put no, a little flyer. No, you can. Absolutely. Go for it. Uh, call in uh, now and uh, I'll pay you £5 an hour. Brilliant. What an offer. Wow. Tamsin, what's yeah. your... Oh, hello. I'll speak to you after the show. Tamsin, what's your... Uh, shut up now. What's your experience of the festival like, Well, Tamsin? I'm an Edinburgh virgin. This is my first festival. An Edinburgh virgin. So you're approaching it... Sexually already. Um, yes. <laughs> Does that mean it's hard not that you've to. never been to the festival before? I've never been or... to the festival before, performing oh, at the festival. I see. Um, and I'm doing Cabaret Spectacular Where every is it Friday on? and Saturday night, plug, 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 at the Pleasance Courtyard Cabaret Bar at half past midnight. And That's our brilliant. bars open later than anywhere else. You see, so you're blowing people courtyard. in to get drunk. Fantastic. 
Well, you know, people like to have a drink, don't they, on it at the weekend? I did last night, hence why I sound like Frank Butcher today. You don't sound like Frank Butcher. He oh. sounds like this. Tiffany, no! Right. <laughs> I've just, uh, just got a very, very husky voice today. It's um, nice. Yeah, so it's going, it going well. well. You're enjoying it. It's brilliant. Okay, yeah. you're so much more upbeat about it. I'm having a fabulous. You're, are you doing your own flyering? Um, yeah, and I d I'm, I'm agreed with Jen on that. It's not it's nice like flyering. It's horrible. It's not yeah. nice trying to get but people to come and see something that me, you're doing. Yeah, just exactly. want people to come. Well, if in case they recognise you and go, hang on, you gave me the flyer, and you're the person who is it. They just feel you're invading people's here. space all the time. Going, right. yeah. It's part of the culture. This Edinburgh Festival has its own culture. There's this place called the Royal Mile, and all that Royal Mile is alive with people giving out flyers, some in costumes, people looking for ever more original and innovative ways to give out flyers. But only one young man, for what I'll do, is I'll get poor children to do it, you know, distract. <laughs> Some from like you know all sorts of chaos. All right, so um, what we're going to do now is have a little listen to some news, find out what's going on in this crazy world of ours. G will do a poem to wrap up the show at the end. We've still got Matt's cultural review, which that, I couldn't which write is... because I got told off. No, because you're doing a radio show. You can't do that. Oh. So I'll say like if like if during if in the <laughs> middle of, if in the middle of a football match Wayne Rooney goes, I'm just doing keepy up. So we'll go. Oh, good that you're practicing, Wayne. But this is actually the match now. Read that. <laughs> Yeah, we've, I'm, not, I'm not. You're writing about Cornwall. Great. Cornwall, a review. It'll, History. Oh, and it says the word Just tin. do a comedy well, review. I took that attitude into my Sonic Enigmas. Imagine you can't it, even say it. Sonic. <laughs> At least when he does it, he's concentrating on the, on actually doing it, not gobbling pills, texting ex-girlfriends. It was just for the farce. It's an absolute joke. OK, so uh, let's talk to Noel Gallagher. He's on the, are you all right, Noel? Yeah, I'm. Yeah, I'm all right. Are you all right? Well, <laughs> yeah, I'm okay. Why? Why? Why do, do I sound like I'm not all right? That makes two of us then. We're all right. We're both all right. I see you're we're adopting. All right. Yeah, we're all right. What's this confrontational stance you're adopting right at the beginning of the conversation? Oh, I'll get on with it, Russell. Have you been listening to the show? I haven't. No, I've been watching the football this morning because. Uh... You're clashing with uh, goals on Sunday, and I'm afraid. <laughs> okay, fair enough. No, no, I've just, I've just switched it on now. Are you going to go on to? Uh, I was going to go on to Tim Lovejoy's Soccer AM. I said you it, should, you should do because not a lot of people know that you're into football, do they? No, well, I, mean, I just don't go on that, about it. They just think that you're into sex. <laughs> <laughs> There's something that you constantly plug and on my behalf. And, and dressing like a vampire. Dressing like a vampire, vampiric sex. There was another. If you hadn't been watching Goals on Sunday, you would have known that there's been another. Uh, uh, there's been a kiss and tell on me done from nine years ago. In which you, should, you, you should have your own program called Girls on Sunday, and then you'll go on talking about. That'd be lovely. I'd like, I'd like to get girls on Sunday. Could be a lovely show. Oh well, let's just have a look at that moment again. Oh, oh that's glorious. Uh, well, fantastic work there. Unfortunately, the dribbling was a bit poor. Stuff like, hey, yeah. eh? what about that? Come so on. Been, so there's been yet another kiss and tell, has there? Yet another kiss and tell. Noel. this is from someone I had it off with um, about eight years ago. She describes me as being skinny and pasty, and my delicious moves, my brilliantly. Are you sure that's not a typo? So it's not skinny and tasty? Perhaps it's that. Perhaps it's that. Perhaps skinny and tasty is what they meant. But they do reiterate it several times. And my painted Russell Brand sex moves have been described as being like a rabid dog. A rabid dog, she says. I like, and, and I had a crazy look in my eyes. I was like, I'm ever so good at the old sex. Bloody well, cheek of it. Well, I can corroborate that. <laughs> Thank you. Can he? Very sweet of you to say so. The crazy look, Trevor, not the rabid dog. All <laughs> uh, right. I thought you were just saying you'd been to bed with Russell Brand. No, Trevor. Uh, no, not yet. I not mean, yet. Oh, it's on the <laughs> cards, though. No, it's definitely on the cards, and then and that'll be some kiss and tell. Let me tell you that. Wow. <laughs> that oh, well, now there's I a front I'm page splash for the everyone on that night. Trevor, <clears throat> stop going on about ceilings. So, um, yeah, what, what's up? You've you've got the flu, have you? I've got, I, yeah, I've got lifestyle flu. Mm, lifestyle, because you've just come back from a beef. Uh, oh, you've got back flu. From a beef, uh, yeah. Yeah, we got we all got messed up out there, man. It was good though. But you still, you know, you got nightclubs meeting dirty people and stuff. Yeah, did you have a nice not, time not... meeting dirty people? Yeah, no, we, no, we had a good weekend. When I see Kasabian, it was uh, it was good fun, but kind of got back here and just fell apart basically. Did you? Yeah, you need to have a little rest. Who was you there with, Sarah, your girlfriend? I was there with my missus. I was there with uh, my, the right honourable Scully. Scully. Uh, Scully, yeah, uh, also known as uh, Sir Horace Gentleman. I was there with him, and uh, the legendary DJ, Mike Pixley. Well, I'm glad that you're having a lovely time out there, but you've come back and you're falling apart of the seams. We've been talking yeah. about sex or dinners over the course of the show. A lot of people have been seeking to combine them. It will tell us a lot about you, Noel, which of these two topics you choose to give us an anecdote on sex or dinners that you've had. What have you got for us? 
well, well, that sounded like sex. Also, probably can't can't give any sexual anecdotes. Obviously, no, no. I mean, I've, I've spoke to your girlfriend. It's a terrible business. What should <laughs> you describe? Are you, are you up in Edinburgh? Yeah, we're in Edinburgh. We're at Edinburgh Festival. Are you coming to watch me? I might do. She's she's from Edinburgh. Sarah, his girlfriend is from Edinburgh. Come uh, up, come you know, up to the you know, festival. Well, you know they've erected a statue of her on Princess Street because she's going out with me. You know that, don't you? Well, naturally, <laughs> it must be an honour for the city to see one of their children, one of their daughters, going out what? of a confirmed job. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, are we going to come up? Maybe, I don't know. Come up, come and see my show. And also, Tre if you were coming up today, you could see Trevor Locke uh, at the uh, Gilda Bloom Wine Bar at four o'clock yeah. today. Might give that one a miss. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, people are in their droves, Noel. People yeah. are, are disgusting. People are protesting outside the venue, saying it shouldn't be allowed. It's so like have, you the... been, have you been playing every night, then? I, I've just, I got here yesterday, I did my first night last night, it was brilliant, really went well. Yeah, it's yeah. good, it was a laugh, you'll like it, come and see it, it's a really good show. Well, I, I, I mean, I like it anyway, you know, I like it anyway, you're, you're a very funny guy. Thank you very much, appreciate it. You should get, yeah. come up come up and see this one, it'd be very, really nice to see you up here. I might do, what's, all, what's, what's this cute thing I keep saying, Advert, I'll tell you about your new TV show. It's good, my new TV show that, uh, that me, Matt and Trevor are making, it's called uh, Russell know, Brand's Got Issues. I know, I know what it's called, what's the advert all about? Well, I just was trying to make myself look important, <laughs> so, so I thought, so we, we came, the idea they had was like, oh, it would be a good idea, you're a bit like a bull in a china shop, Russell, aren't you? That's what your personality's like. How about you and a bull in a china shop? I goes, oh, I don't think that's a very good idea. You're not like a bull in a china shop. I'm not, am I? I'm a, if no. I was in a china shop, I'd be buying some fine bone china, perhaps no, a nice like tea a set. Puppy. you're like a small puppy in a sex shop. <laughs> hey, now, what would a puppy be doing in a sex shop? It wouldn't be there long, would it, poor yeah, whimpering brute? Well, you're doing what you do is like hanging your tongue out the side of your mouth, dribbling. Oh, <laughs> come on, you paint a pretty ugly picture of me for a man no, no, who, no, mind no, you, no. we should expect from your lyrics, your command of the English language is not the best. I'm just surprised the sentence made sense in any form. We're just uh, a sh string of admittedly nonsensical words. Yeah, well... Oh. My, yeah, we're going to tell it to my swimming pool. <laughs> I'll, I'll argue with your millions. They're still uh, yeah, dwarfed uh, yeah, by I'll James with, Blunt's fortune. Argue with that when you're in your little what's it, your little paddling pool around the back of your little one bedroom bed sit in Camden Road. <laughs> <laughs> right, I'm going to. While I say to my gardener while he's whizzing past on his on his, on his lawnmower, <laughs> he's been dissing me again. Sounds a bit dangerous. He wants to slow down on that lawnmower. It could be a terrible incident. You'll end up like Keith Moon. Listen, um, well, okay, Noel, you've been, you've been delightful in insulting and belittling me on my own radio show. I, I'm ill, I'm ill. No, no, fair enough, fair enough, no, that's, that's quite See, understandable. What, an, an anecdote about sex is I can't give you, obviously. Or dinners that you've had, can you cook? Dinners? Can you uh, cook, do you cook? Can, no, no, Or no. Do, you have, do you have cooks whizzing by on roller boots, no, knocking you up Sarah, some Sarah. yobs nosh? Luckily, for, for a yob's nosh. That's <laughs> what I imagine you eat. Pies. <laughs> the yob's nosh. Yeah, yob's nosh. That's that, what Matt that eats. Sounds, that sounds like a sexual act right there, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it could be if you're in the wrong no. company. Luckily, um, enough, look, luckily, luckily enough, Rusty, my missus is a fabulous cook, so I don't have to get involved in the kitchen. That's nice, that's nice. Now, I, imagine well, it, well, nice, I hope there's a similar arrangement going on with the sex. I hope that she can cater for that as adequately. <laughs> <laughs> well, not in the kitchen, though, because that would be on IG. Certainly yeah. would be, no. Matt won't even let chicken near a croissant. That story's probably made him throw up in his own mouth. <laughs> uh, so, um, <laughs> hey, Noel, you, have you got any suggestions for, like, Trevor Locke, right, as a competition for people to come and see his show? He'll talk about anything they suggest for one minute during his show, and then uh, they can come and watch him talking about that thing for one minute. Probably be the best one minute of that hour at four o'clock at the Gilded Balloon Wine Bar. Have you got any suggestions of something that Trevor could talk about for a minute, Noel? Religion's always a good one. Religion. Trevor Lock on religion. Okay. Well, As suggested by Noel Gallagher, we can say. Yeah, but that, that's a bit serious, that one, isn't it? What about... What it, oh, no, that's quite offensive. Hang on a minute. <laughs> <laughs> it's different watching you, you going through the roller deck of your mind. Oh, right. Oh, a cup of tea, drugs. Oh, that's fine. That's, uh, just offend everyone on the planet. OK, so, yeah, think of something not too offensive that Trev can talk about for a minute. Perhaps you could, could talk about the, the career of Oasis for, for one minute. That'd be nice, hey, well, wouldn't it? Well, listen, while we're on Oasis, what were all these disparaging comments you made about me in The Enemy? I didn't Does make any disparaging... What is this? I've not read that in The Enemy. What disparaging you, comments? You, you, you said... Uh, yeah, go on. You were going on about my arthritic shoulders and saying that <laughs> Oasis having a best of out, that's a bit rich coming from someone who's been ripping off the Beatles all his life. Blimey! Eh? I didn't say that. You I wouldn't say that. I wouldn't say that. I like Oasis. It was, it, it, it was attributed to... There was a picture of you. Yeah. Did I look and, handsome? 
No, you look like a vampire. <laughs> and decide it was, was those exact quotes. Saying, well, it's a bit rich at Oasis having a tribute, like, at Oasis as a Beatles tribute band, having a best of album. Yeah, Their whole career's yeah. been a best well, of. <gasps> Because you knew I was out of the country, didn't you, Mr. Smarty Pants? I thought, he'll never know. He'll never did you, you didn't, well, you didn't know, say that, did you? Did. I might have said, well, and then what was the thing about Afro? It would be nice to see Noel with his arthritic shoulders no, floundering was around. Saying, someone was saying, you know this gig you've blagged me into doing? Yeah, Coco, okay, to raise money for Focus 12, come, 2nd of November. Uh, how come... Uh, I was very professional that one, isn't it? I know I'm doing. <laughs> they were saying, how come that I'm allegedly supporting you and you were saying he doesn't want... Uh, any... What, how did you Oh, yeah, it? right, guys. He doesn't want any more burden on his uh, already arthritic oh, shoulders. So, so you have read the quote, then? I haven't. I just remembered saying it. <laughs> 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 but I didn't say that. And anything I said about you and your magnificent career was in jest. I have nothing yeah, well, but you, respect well, for you. Yeah, well, you did on my guest list. is just now shot up. <laughs> oh, Christ. <laughs> yeah. Oh, blimey. You know, yeah. yeah, well, Scully will be coming now. Well, bring him. Bring all of your crazy cronies. I'd bring like to... Hey, they're not cronies. Well, I'd, I'd, listen, you're the one who says you've got gardeners whizzing by and cooks and chefs, and yeah, you've all, always on about flunkies. They're employees. My cronies are disciples. Disciples, <laughs> now. That's it. Why don't we, if it's Sunday, there's a thing Christianity. Go on, there's well, any other religions well, you'll ever pop out. Well, hey, listen, if you want to offend Christianity, bring it on. All right. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, what, in what was, I don't want to particularly offend Christianity. I like belief systems. Well, nice to believe in things. By saying that. The old belief system in God is actually a farce. <laughs> My belief system? Uh, well, whose well, belief know, system? An old, an old religion is a farce. Oh, right, if Christianity is a farce. Well, of course it's a farce. Christianity is a farce, <laughs> yeah. to tirade, says Noel on a Sunday. Mm, I mean, it's, yeah, so I'm not really that into it. I like Jesus, uh, though. No, he didn't exist, did he? Oh, I think there was someone. Was Trevor, did Jesus exist? I think he existed, yeah. Come on. He, yeah. he might have Someone, who? someone who? lived. Says who? <laughs> So it says the Bible says it, doesn't it? it says it in the Quran. Really? Bible, Quran, yeah. any book you well, want to mention. And the Dead Sea Scrolls mentioned. Dead Sea Scrolls, Jesus. no. Yeah. And, who, and, 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 and who are those books uh, attributed to? I don't like, know, some uh, bloke. Look, what you Matthew, want? Luke, John. Those guys. They're, They're... in Hollyoaks, that lot. <laughs> 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 Lovely. Matthew, right. The Gospels <laughs> are in Hollyoaks. What was Matthew's surname? <laughs> Matthew. What's uh, his surname? Matthew yeah. Bible, he was. <laughs> Matthew, Matthew who? <laughs> <laughs> Luke, Luke who? John who? I don't know, but they're so famous. It's, it's, you know, it's a bit know, like it's the all Beatles. The, the Bible, Schmeibel. No, fair enough, no. <laughs> 2,000 years of thought just, and academia, you go, intelligence, you, all just being He said that you didn't, want, you didn't want Trevor to talk about religion for one minute in front of 12 people <laughs> is showing a Gilded Bloom wine bar, and you've just said on our BBC radio show that Christianity's a farce. It is a farce. All religions are farce. Well, uh, it's better if he says all religions are farce. All religions well, are farce. Yeah, That's you better. You know, you know in the Bible, Yeah. does it mention dinosaurs? Does not mention it's not about it's dinosaurs. Not it's not one of those <laughs> books. It's not it's Indiana Jones. It's not inside the doesn't mention <laughs> temples of doom either, Noel. End of <laughs> argument. End of argument. Let's talk about sex, baby. <laughs> OK. <laughs> hey, let's talk about sex and the Bible. Let's really jam. Yeah, well, does it mention sex in the Bible? Yes. Oh. People begat does, each other, don't yeah, they? Yeah, Abraham a lot begat of people. He begat sex. him. Don't lay down with animals. Well, don't lay down with animals. Yeah. Trevor Locke ignored that one. Everything else I follow, though. Oh, come on. I've never laid down with animals. I've got up with a few, you though. <laughs> 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 no, let's yeah. get you off before you say something that gets us murdered. Um, come up, come up and see me at the Edinburgh Festival. I'd really love to see you. Any slanderous remarks, uh, well, I'd like fact, to deny. I'm, I wouldn't mind coming up and uh, sitting in on a discussion about religion with Trevor Locke, because that sounds like it could be explosive. Let's it could do be it. Really let's explosive. do it. We'll do, a, we'll do a special midnight show, and it'll be you and me live in discussion in hey, front of a studio you, audience. Hey, you've got my phone number. Anytime you want to, anytime you want to duke it out about religion, son. Duke it out about religion. <laughs> I do. What's that? Even make everything into violence. What's I, wrong with you? I can see the poster now. Crikey. Trevor Lock and Noel Gallagher duke it out over religion. Jesus uh, Christ. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Why would your name be first? How, how are you well, billing yourself before Noel Gallagher in this religion showdown, I'm, Trevor? I've got previous at the festival. You know. How many records have you sold? He's not sold any. But no. if you should see his criminal no. record, by, by God, there's some no, interesting record. information. Well, I, a lot of it. I reckon I've probably got a long criminal record. Yeah, you probably have. Now, don't start going on about all them burglaries you've done and that. We had trouble with that last time. 
So, Noel, come up and see us. We've got to go because we've got to play music before the end of this radio programme that we do. Yeah, it's lovely well, talking to you. Give my love to your girlfriend, Sarah, and uh, your brother, in, in fact. Play Spirit in the Sky. <laughs> We're not playing Spirit in the <laughs> Sky. <laughs> 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 We've not got Spirit in the Sky. Play Spirit in the Sky. Play Spirit in the Sky. We're not playing Spirit in the Sky. We're going to play God gave rock and roll to us. Listen, we're not playing that. No, thank you. We might do. We'll try and find it. We'll try and get it for right. you. See you in a bit, man. See you later. Take bye. it easy. Ta-da now. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Um, right, well, now we're going straight to the... Bye, Noel Gallagher. We're going straight to the winner of the Sonic Enigma. OK, now, remember earlier we did the Sonic Enigma. Can we have a listen to that to remind us of what it was? Remember, this is Trevor's con competition, the Sonic Enigma. Let's have a listen. The usual sound of Trevor meddling with himself. Oh, here comes Bonnie Tyler, Hercules and Superman. OK, so what do you... Uh, like, who's on the line, then? Susie. Susie? Are you there, dear? I am here. Hello. Are you all right? You've been enjoying our radio programme? I have indeed. Yes, I have. Bit shambolic because we're up in Edinburgh, but we're trying our hardest. Do you, I know you're liking Edinburgh. Then. Love Edinburgh. Be Love Edinburgh. Beautiful, beautiful, city. beautiful city, beautiful people. Everyone's friendly. We're having a gas. Shows are selling well. Not Trevor's, obviously. No, Trevor's. <laughs> Stop Tre it. <laughs> What? Stop what? People Keeper. don't know that you're joking, do they? Uh, people don't know. I'll get more abuse on my MySpace in a minute. Someone put eat your fudge, you see. That's terrible. Yeah. I do actually love Trevor. It's obvious, isn't it? Um, okay, Susie, so um, you've you've managed to unwrangle the enigma. I have, although I, I would say it's pretty tenuous. I really didn't think I had it right. I thought I'd just text it anyway. It's a bit of a vague one there, Trevor. Go on. No, what do you think it is? I think it is Time for Heroes by Liberty. Is it, Trevor? Is it Time for Heroes? Jolly well, it's Russell. That is the correct answer. Well done. You can come and see us in Reading next week, as long as you can get tickets. I don't know. We'll, 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 try, we'll try and get you in, Susie, for that. That is the prize. Where do you live, Susie? I live she's, in Glasgow, but I can travel. You should have entered that other competition. She's you in Glasgow. You've had a chance at well, getting the prize. Come, and, come to Edinburgh. Though, so. Why don't you come, come and see here. Trev this afternoon? When's he on four, did you say? Four o'clock, wine bar, Gilda Balloon. It'd be brilliant. Balloon. We'll all be there. We're all going to be hanging out. Well, you can't come. What? Are you coming, Susie? I may. You may. <laughs> <laughs> I may. Let me be clear. He's wrong. <laughs> She's not committing. Will someone please come to my show? <laughs> we'll <laughs> gonna come. We'll be there. It's going to be inundated. It's going to be brilliant. I need to sleep before that. <laughs> oh, don't sleep during it, Matt. You're not going to miss <laughs> much. <laughs> so, Susie, um, OK, my love, so you've won that competition. That's, uh, well, are we going to hear... Have we got time to listen to that track and then get another At one? At the end of the show. We're going to listen to that track at the end of the show. Susie, it's been lovely talking to you. Congratulations. Bye -bye. Well done. We'll sort out your prize. Take care, Thanks, love. Thanks, Russell. Bye. Bye, Bye, love. So, OK, right, so uh, Matt's cultural bloody review. We've got loads of things to get on with. Matt, culturally review something. Cornwall is really good. There's lots of history there, and <laughs> I went on a horse. Well done. <laughs> Didn't you go to caves? I went to some slate mines. Tell Honestly, me, Secretary, what was that thing about witches? The roads are too thin there. The roads are too thin. Very there. dangerous driving. And what about you put witches' boobs in or something? Yeah, witches were treated very badly. It's a witchcraft museum in a little village called Boscastle, and they've got it's run by witches. Witches run it. Do they yeah. look like witches? They got witch hats on. They not. No, no. That's, that's the stereotype. Against against the woman, the, one of them does look a bit like you know the average. What witch. do you mean? What long chin, long nose? No, just sort of. That's what witches look like. Wizened Walt. old lady. Walt on the side of her head. Look, oh, shut up. It's not all about witches. There's a it's lot to do about... in Cornwall, and it's really it's good. It's not all about witches. Mainly that witches, new slogan but, um, for Cornwall. When, when I was on the horse. <laughs> it's not all about witches. We've got other stuff. When I was on the horse, it yeah, was scary. Yeah, tell me about it. I had an awful time. <laughs> <laughs> but go on. Horse is a word for heroin. <laughs> if you don't realise that. <laughs> um, I was about to do a great joke. Well, the show's coming from Edinburgh. Come on. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> I'm, only, I'm only joking. Racist. I love the people of Edinburgh. I love this There's city. not really time to go into it, but it's scary. Why didn't you know you were on an horse? I went on a horse. Do you know how to ride a horse? No, no, it's scary. An absolute madness. It's like being on a big coward that's scared of cars. <laughs> Horses are just big cowards. They are huge, muscly cowards. <laughs> oh, it's a car. I'm afraid. Yeah. Turn back. And you have to kick it rough that? with them and stuff. Do you? You have to like kick them to get them to go Blimey. and pull their reins to get them to stop. It's you scary because you, when it sort of shuffles and sneezes and stuff. <laughs> It's horrible. <laughs> no, it's horrible. No one ever do it. Are you sure you run a horse? <laughs> I think Sounds so. Like your love life, it dear. Was... <laughs> it shuffles and sneezes. It's a coward. Of course it, it is. You the would jump on the back of an old man riding him around for corner. No, it was you? definitely a horse. It was huge. <laughs> it was called Ruby. Ruby the horse. It was yeah. a girl then, wasn't it? Uh, yes. They've got three sexes. The horses. That's no, the interesting. No, they've not. They do. They've got man, lady, and gelder. What's a gelder? Wow, it's the third one, isn't it? The really? Is that it's not a third off. There's not a third sex. What Trev? is that? Man-made sex. I don't know if it's a man made sex. I, I don't know. What's a pony and what's a horse and what's Trevor, a... I don't, I'm not getting into this! <laughs> you <laughs> just claimed the 
there's a third type of horse. It's uh, called a gilder. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, they're measured in hands, aren't they, horses? You know, well, less about horses than I do, you maniac. I'm right, asking my review question. was Trevor, rubbish because uh, of Matt Trevor. Matt, in short, then. yeah, you ruined his review. Eat your fudge. Cornwall's beautiful. Um, it's they do make fudge. Unspoilt, largely. Beaches are lovely. Tintagel car. Oh, it's beautiful. I'm going to move down place. there one day. No, you're not. You've got a lot to do. I right, am. I can G- still live. I'll still come up and see you're you. You're not going to Cornwall. Desperate little twit. <laughs> G. G's here. Let's give him some atmosphere. Yeah. Yeah. All right. G, sum up this poem. Or sum up this show in a poem. Okay, this is basically dedicated to Trevor and it's called... Uh, why? No, it's why? Called... He's an idiot. It's the Ballad of the Fringe Performer for all the Fringe. Hey. Fringe. Ballad? Right you don't deserve edge. a ballad. Got a flick more than a fringe. Good people. Oh, you Abandon idiot. all sleep. <laughs> Abandon all sleep, ye who would find solace complete amid these Edinburgh streets. Abandon quiet nights in, ye who would speak of its delights and its treats and its sights of promise ready to be seen. Abandon those fears of the dark, ye who would willingly embark upon that fanciful flight of crafting their artistic dream, believing it may be their start. An epiphany of performance greatness, a distorted symphony of voices, a millennia of different stages, recorded simply within miscellaneous pages, reported critically by ever-watchful sages, bestowing the wages of joy and despair, based solely upon their allocation of stars which in accordance exclusively gleam. Bring me your show of burning gold. Bring me your flyers of desire. Bring me your five-star reviews, O clouds unfold. Bring me your glamorous agencies, I'm available for hire. Yes, abandon humility, reservedness and fragility, for ostentation and extravaganza form the order of the day. Abandon all reality, bathe yourself in sweet insanity, imbue concoctions of elixir vanity, and let the spotlight's clarity lead the way. For our stars will rise and fall between each curtain call, but right now we are lost in the enthrall of cheers, tears and hopes of a performing career, so abandon it all except the sheer abandonment of it all. Poetry! Poetry! an actual poem! It's, uh, it's no relation to Trevor's act. Though. Probably the best poem you've done on a show, but you didn't talk about like Trevor and us and that. So I, I'm like... trying not to insult Trevor today. That's what I tried to do. Really? Thank yeah. you. Well, well, no, no, it's, it's a show. It's a show. It's the natural it's order of things. We've People got, like insulting Trevor. We've got Thank to support, him. We've got to Thank support him for his show. No, well, listen, we've plugged that show through. <laughs> you may not have noticed. I mean, I'll pretend to not like him. I've plugged his show for three bleeding hours. <laughs> trying to drum up an Five audience. Five at the bongo tri- rooms. Oh, no, don't <laughs> get down the bongo rooms at 5pm. The old see you side to blow it's your not- mind. <laughs> <laughs> it's four o'clock at the Gilded Balloon Wine Bar. We'll all be there. It's going to be a fantastic laugh. Come down. Want some tickets. In Two Glasgow. Want some tickets. Who's going to play us out? Why? It's the Libertines, of course. A time for heroes. Thanks for listening. We're in ready next week. Take care. Six music.